If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Man, fuck, fuck Justin. We don't need him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's so, the Sal and Adam show. No, just kidding. You know what I? You know what I? I want to say um, before I talk about this guest that we have on the show. Something about this particular guest. When we first started Mind Pump, there were a few podcasts that we looked up to um, because we listened to them and we'd say, "God, they are doing." something right and it's one so of them funny when you say looked up to like that like like, we, hey. like we, there was there was there was a few podcasts i think that had figured this formula out they I, were just doing it right you know and, and well I, and i don't even know if it's that because how, how can we say what's right or wrong and let's who's to say how we're in our podcast, opinion where it's going to evolve what we we recognize that they were doing something different than everybody else that was really working well and that drew all of us to yeah. listening to we're them. talking about the fighter and the kid um and this was a podcast that all of us listened to when we first started we thought it was hilarious we thought the chemistry be uh, between brendan schaub and brian callen was just incredible and we talked about oh man you know what you know we're starting this podcast mind pump like once it gets, you know, to a certain point, it'd be so awesome to meet those guys or one of those guys, have them on our show, and here we are. Uh, we got to interview Brendan Schaub uh, in L.A., um, and he's a fucking great dude. What a, a great dude. You know, being a podcaster and, and getting a chance to finally meet him in person and talk to him, uh, there, is, there is such an art to what that man does every time he gets on the show and I don't and we get to ch- you guys get a chance today we we get into this which I thought was really fun and by the way you know he gave us a really nice plug on Fighter and the Kid the other it's day so cool yeah and what was neat was you know and I take a, a lot of pride in in what we do on on Mind Pump which is why we named it Mind Pump and we didn't want to be uh, you know, a fitness only like show, muscle pump, or right. Yeah. I wanted, I, I wanted, I wanted to be able to interview someone like him and not only ask him questions that are related to diet and working out. And I, and he talks about how he thought that that was what he was going to get. We, we, he, he was dodging we the, fitness. he was dodging the interview because he thought that that's where we would go. And and we never had any intentions of going. No, we that don't. Route. We don't. We talk a lot about him about. Uh, his his uh, you know transition from MMA to you know podcasting to comedy. Uh, he is a great storyteller, so it's a very entertaining episode. He's oh, really man. easy to listen to. Great storyteller, easy to talk to. Um, we had a lot of fun with him. So he co-hosts the podcast, The Fighter and the Kid, which is hilarious. We've mentioned it many times. He also has a podcast called The Big Brown Breakdown, uh, which is another great podcast. Uh, you can find. Brendan Schaub on Instagram. Brendan is spelled B-R-E-N-D-A-N. Schaub is S-C-H-A-U-B. Uh, he's on Facebook and Twitter as well. And then their website is www.tfatk.com. Yep. Um, so it was a great it was a great time meeting this guy and getting a chance to finally interview someone we had talked about interviewing way back when. So here we are talking to Brendan Schaub. What has that transition been like? Have you got any heckling? I imagine mostly our fans that are coming to see you, anyways. Like, yeah, um, uh, not too much heckling. I had one heckler in Australia, and um, what was he saying? Uh, he was just loud. Like, there's difference between hecklers and then just drunk fans like that are annoying. This guy, um, I think I did like nine shows in five days in Australia, all over, plane, 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 and. We do meet and greets or after every show. They're like, dude, you have two shows back-to-back theaters. It's going to be a beast. You got to do the meet and greet before. I'm like, that's so weird, but let's do it. So I do it, and these like group of just bros comes up. That's my fan base. The bros. <laughs> <laughs> they come up. Yeah, if you're a single girl, for sure come to the show. Man. So they they like, do the head nod. Like, dude, uh, they, they come up, and uh, they're hammered. These Australian dudes are hammered. I'm like, man, it is six o'clock my man i don't start till eight like you guys need to chill calm down it's gonna be a long night Let's get some like, nah, around we're here. doing it i'm like all right and so i start the show and they're laughing at things that it's not even the punchline they're laughing at things that aren't funny at all and it's disturbing the crowd and then they start chanting things like from the show or something i've referenced before i just go ah, i gotta chill out fellas let's chill out man they keep going and then they start getting nasty and I, I'm trying to power through it. And then finally, I'm just like, oh, I haven't dealt, had to deal with a lot of hecklers. Right. So I just stopped and was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I went, fellas, 
I, <laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe was there. He's a buddy of mine. You know, Tony, Tony's yeah. a small guy. Yeah. Tony uh, was there like uh, two months before, so they, they knew who he was. They went to a show, and they, they told me that in the meet and greet. I went, fellas, I'm not Tony Hinchcliffe. I'm not your normal comedian. If you don't shut the fuck up, <laughs> I will come down there <laughs> with this giant brown hand in front of everyone and slap the fuck out of the four of you and just <laughs> pipe down the rest of the Dude, night. Dude, you know what? That's, that's true. You wow, have that. You can pull move. that card. No, you know, no other comedian could pull that it's card. It's not good, though. It's oh, not oh, good. Shit. It's, well, the show was fine because they were laughing at them, but if I, I've gone that route, like I've, I've had to do trial and error here, and if I brag, if I talk about my size or looks, it, it'll shut the, it, it puts people in the defense like, Jesus Christ. Oh, like wow. you went too far. Yeah, they're like, oh, come, oh, they thought what's well, like, uh, I, I look, I, and I'm not, I've never been a bully, but I look like the guy who bullied you in, in high school. Uh, yeah. So that's not funny. So I have to build, you know, knock down those walls. So oh, how do you deal wow. with that? You have to come in with like horrible posture. Like, eh. No, no, I'm myself. I'm, I'm not a bully. I just, uh, you know, you just, you just do funny stuff that's real. And then and eventually you build down those walls. Yeah, the the problem guys. is when I do all my sets at the comedy store, a uh, sunset. Those aren't. That's not my fan base. They have no no mm. idea who I am. I cover my tattoos ninety nine percent of the time. Oh, really? I try to yeah. I, I try to look you know dapper. And there it's like you know you're, you're dealing with people that don't know you. Hmm. What's harder, fighting or trying to make people laugh? Uh, completely different. Completely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, <laughs> bit. Just like I, I'm always <laughs> nervous before any show, but I'm never. Uh, <laughs> like before a fight, I was terrified for my life. Yeah. You know, but in in stand up. Listen, if you if you put the the work in, you know you sh- you should not fuck up. And uh, can I cuss on it? I try not oh, to oh, cuss. Please man. do oh, though. I try no, not I, to. Yeah. But um, I uh, it, with stand up, you, you should know. You, you know, I'm getting my training in at the comedy store. So mm. um, in fighting, I could you know I can say this in confidence. I outworked everyone I've ever fought. And as far as training camp, no one outworked me. There's no fucking way. You'd have to be a robot or on PEDs. Maybe they were, <laughs> but um, they, no one outworked me. However, in that octagon, I can't control the other guy. I just can't, man. He might. Be, he, they happen to be really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes they, I get punched in the face. In comedy, man, I, I put the work in. If it doesn't work, it's on me usually, or the crowd. You know. At what yeah. point? At what point did you uh, make that switch mentally that you realized? Because you made it all the way. You're in the UFC, so it's not like you made it to the top, yeah. right? At what point did you make that switch and say like? I'm over this. This is where I'm going. And was that a hard transition for you to let go of of fighting? Scary. I, yeah. I should say scary. I know I reference scary a lot. I'm a scared person in general. But um, uh, it, it was it was like this process where where each fight, like the, the passion, the fire's not there, and that's when you get hurt. And I just. It was the perfect storm, whether you believe in God or not. I'm not the most religious person, but whoever's up there, whatever the earth was just going, dude, get out of fighting. You can go do this for God's sakes. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to keep doing this. And the UFC was like, oh, you make a lot of money in sponsorships? Well, we're signing the Reebok deal. So you want some, what else you need us to do to get you over here, man? Right. Yeah. And then I lose my fight in the locker room. I looked at my team. I told him, I said, this is the last one, man. And like, oh, come on. I'm like, I, I swear to God, this is it. This is it, man. I'm done after this. Like, all right, we've had a good camp. Just go out there, do your thing. And, you know, I went out there, lost, and came back. And I was like, I'm, I'm at peace with this, man. I'm good. I don't want to do this anymore. I got this busted lip. I'm, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm freaking 50 cent over here paying the bills. It's just like, it's, this isn't worth it to me, man. Well, I, there's, there's something more for me. I, I knew it. There's just something more for me out there. Well, you're like, already doing Fighter and the Kid, right? You're already doing Fighter and the Kid at this point. I was yeah. doing Fighter and the Kid. Now, was it doing really well at this point? It was doing good. I, it, was doing, it was doing, yeah, it was doing well. And because were you making more doing that at that point yet from fighting or was it still fighting that was paying the bill? Again, this this is, you know, whoever's upstairs, whoever's controlling this chaos we're living. Uh, I remember I got my check for getting punched in the face by Travis Brown and that came in the mail. And then I got my check for doing the fire and the kid. And the fire and kid one was like five grand more. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like, God damn it. All right. All yeah. right. But then I had the, you know, the infamous podcast with Joe Rogan where he mm. was like, you know, you're terrible at fighting. Let's never do it. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was like, yeah, right on. Cool, man. And then, <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Thanks, asshole. And then. Um, Did that get you guys a lot closer, though, as friends? People, don't, uh, yeah, people don't realize how close Joe. I talk to Joe every day, every single oh, day. Yeah. I talked to him this morning, um, every day. Any big decision I have, I talk to him. Um yeah, I guess it brought us closer. Um, but Only the closest close people can say that too. You know what I mean? When you know someone that well, and they say to you, "Yo, still awkward," but um, 
<laughs> Nobody wants to be told that. Fuck. It's your craft, bro. Yeah. True. It's your True. craft. It, it, was, it was more embarrassing than anything, but mm. I was already done before that. Mm-hmm. But the competitor in me, when he did that, the, the athlete in me went, oh, let's prove him wrong. Mm-hmm. Let's do mm-hmm. this. So I was like, I'm going to cut to 205 and, and fight just to prove Joe wrong. Mm-hmm. I got down to like 218, 217. I was cutting like crazy. I woke up one morning, looked in the mirror, went, what the fuck are you doing, man? You don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. And I just stopped. Wow. Wow. Now, how much pushback did you get from like the UFC when you were making that transition? I got to think they'd be a little butt hurt over that. And I know you openly talk about the sponsorship, Reebok, and everything. Which like we all appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah, you get any good. hate from, from UFC or they did they contact you about shit or try and quiet you down at all? Uh, the only hate I get, and all that, I'll, again, what. Ah, man, it, it was the perfect storm. So that I used to have so much animosity towards Dana White and the UFC and how it, you know I didn't become world champ and I wasn't this GSP type of star. And I had the biggest chip on my shoulder, the biggest you could imagine. And I was doing the podcast and I would spit fucking yeah, fire, yeah. man, for the fighters. <laughs> That's how I found myself. you. Yeah, yeah, and I would go crazy. And then, you know, you just, you just grow up and you mature. And Dana White's not making decisions based off, and I hate to reference myself in third person here, but bear with me. He's not making decisions off Brendan Schaub's life. He's not. He's a company to run. Right, right. So I don't have any animosity towards him. Zero. Matter of fact, I, I should probably give him royalties because I would still be fighting if they didn't sign these deals and things didn't end up going bad for me in the UFC. So I don't. I, I have zero animosity. I would help them out how, however they need help in, in any uh, that being aspect. S- that being said, what do you think, though, about like the whole rebuy? Is it working out for them? Is it doing well? Or are the fighters still having a hard time with it? Like, Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I do think that was a mistake. And again, it's, it's not Reebok's fault. Mm-hmm. If, if you're Reebok, well, so they got a great deal. they're going, this is a good <laughs> deal. But yeah. they, they don't know the lay of the land. They're going, yeah. hold on. We, we can do all this for this much? Hell yeah, we're in, man. Mm-hmm. They didn't realize... The, the roots of our sport and mm-hmm. the backlash they would get. And it, it, it was, I think, the, and they're trying to figure it out. I have Reebok sweats on right now and they're, they're sending me gear and they, they do make a lot of good stuff. But, you know, what made the UFC so unique was that individual kind of, you know, the walkout gear and the walkout song. Mm-hmm. And oh, now, yeah. now you want to look oh, like yeah. a team, but you got to pay him like a and team. And an ugly ass uniform, too. <laughs> yeah, the rough, man. So Oof. what people don't realize, again, it's it's not Dana's fault or Reebok's fault. They're feeling this out. They don't know, man. Right. And, and they're living and learning and they're getting better. Well, and- I get the feel there. I mean, I feel like Dana is trying to, I mean, rival the NFL. Like, I feel like he's trying to make that look where everyone's got these teams. Uniformity, uniformity to everything. Right. Yeah. You, again, so and I agree they're they're trying to go that professional route, which if that's what you want to do, you have to do that across all bases. You can't just go, oh, we're gonna look professional, but then we're gonna pay him like this. Mm-hmm. We're gonna look the part of the NFL, and then you don't see Roger Goodell going, Oh, that guy fucking sucks. He's the worst of all time. You suck, he sucks, this guy sucks. Like so if you it's want a little WWE if you, there. Yeah, if you want to be the NFL, be the NFL. If you want to be WWE, be the WWE. But they're they're trying to teeter this line right now. And again, they got they sold the company for four billion dollars. Dana's made his money, so right now they're just trying to figure out where they're find at. their identity. They're right? trying to find it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, when you first started podcasting, was it just natural for you? Um, and how did that all start? Yeah. yeah, they literally started right up the street here. Brian Callen, uh, who's partner in crime, met him, and he had his own podcast. The Brian Callen Show had like eight listeners. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, Brian. Yeah, shout out to Brian for that <laughs> shitty uh, podcast uh, where he'd read a book and then tell people what he thought about it. <laughs> Super He still has that podcast. It's awful. That's Anyways, great. he... Uh, he goes, oh, we, we hit off right away, and um, he goes, oh, uh, come on my podcast. And I didn't even know what a podcast was, and I was like, all right, man. And um, went on his podcast. We did it, and I had a good time. and went for about two hours. We just had this weird chemistry. He goes, dude, we yeah. should do this every week. And I was like, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> and oh, he goes, yeah, let's just talk about fighting once a week. I know you're in training camp. You're in the thick of it. Let's just do it. And I went, dude. I'm, I'm down to meet with you and talk and record it, but I want to talk about anything but the UFC. Let me talk about lifestyle, clothing, cars, girls, my, my dating life. Let me do that. And he goes, all right, I guess. <laughs> Started to do that, and we're in his garage and just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And then... Um, yeah, because you guys have a very... So this is all like an electric chemistry. chemistry yeah. This is before Fox. Yeah. Oh, way before Fox. Okay. Wait, yeah, we're, I think we just crossed 300-something uh, episodes. We, we're like 600 deep. We're bald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. We're, we have so many more than Fox. But before Fox, we were probably going for about two years. Fox came along and was like, oh, we want to get in podcasting. We signed with them. And the, the funniest thing with that Fox deal, and again, this isn't Fox. It's just them trying to figure out the podcasting lay of the sure. land. Um, they go, listen, we can't pay you guys anything. 
we really can't pay you, but we can make you official. You're part of Fox, and we, we'll give you some help as far as booking guests. We'll give you a studio. We can't pay anything. I'm like, well, that's fine. That's fine. But if the show blows, we get all, 100% of sponsorship advertising. I went, okay, good luck with that. So then fast forward three years later. Oh, you guys worked that out? Yeah. Signed them into, I signed them into a three-year deal, a four-year deal to that. I did so not know that. Paying two years later, and they're like, Smart. what the f- you know, yeah, they, they, yeah, you guys got a great deal up. with that. Yeah, yeah. we're balling. We're yeah. fucking, we're fucking rich as shit. So then, so then, so then they're, like, they're like, no, we need, yeah. we need fifty percent. Oh man, give me I'm some like, of that shit. Yeah, yeah, see you there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, and so they're like, whoa, whoa we need to figure this out, man. And I went, oh, we should go separate ways, and that's what we did. Yeah. Did it take off? I mean, how long did it take you guys? You guys have a very interesting chemistry. It's like that X factor that you see sometimes that you can't really plan for. Everyone's trying to duplicate it. That's yeah. it. Did you guys know each other beforehand? Were you friends or was it just... No, I met Brian on the set of the Ultimate Fighter 14. Um, I was there as a grappling coach for the for the guys with Shane Carwin and Nate Marquardt. And they brought Brian in and make the kids laugh. He told some terrible wrestling story. No one laughed. <laughs> And he had stand up that night, and you know I've always been into stand up. I've always wanted to do stand up. We went to it. You know he's hilarious, one of the best in the world. And that following week, I was going to move to L.A. I was selling all my stuff in Denver, and I was going to move to L.A. And I go, hey, I'm I'm being L.A. man, I'm actually moving there. He goes, oh, here's my number. Call me, you know, if you're around. And uh, sold all my stuff in Denver. Told my family I was only going to be out there for a month, and I'll be back. But I knew I was never coming mm-hmm. back. And so I drove out there and. Um, I remember I, I got to uh, my uncle's place because I, 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 in the summers I'd grow up in Venice, literally right here. My uncle had a vacation home. So I didn't know anyone. I knew Mark Munoz, if you guys know him, old mm-hmm, school mm-hmm. reference. I knew Mark, but that's it. But I knew I couldn't stay in Denver. So I, I drive, sold everything. I, I get to Venice and I know no one. I remember I got in at like 6 o'clock at night. I'm sitting on the floor and I just start crying. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? Like I, I have no friends. I don't know anyone here. I have no idea what team I'm going to join. Like what am I doing? And then I remember I had Brian's number. I'm like, ah, he's kind of funny. I guess I'll text him. So I go, hey, in town. And it was a little sketchy because you know how the the things pop up? I mean, he must have been just (laughs) yearning for this text. Oh, no. By the way, yeah, right here, bro. Where you at, man? (laughs) I can pick you up in five. Dude, I'm five minutes away. I'm Kevin Spacey. Take it easy. So then... I was way young. He was older. And then, uh, wow. Yeah. Six, yeah. yeah. yeah this is Hollywood after yeah, all, right? Man. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I met him for coffee and then, you know, we just kind of hit it off. And then did, how did the podcast do when you first started off? Was it like taken off from there? Or? Uh, it was good. You know, I mean, between Brian and I's connections as far as me in the fight world, him in the entertainment world, um, you know, people just wanted to come on. And then mm. we just had this chemistry. And what was weird is we found, even now, even to this very day, I could have 50 Cent, Conor McGregor, Brad Pitt. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. The show's numbers are the biggest when it's just Brian and I. Dude, it's we Dude. the same. Yep. So let's your, show, your fans show, love you. Your That's show, the thing. Yeah. Your show was actually one of our, uh, one of the shows that we looked up to when we first started is, because yeah. we listened to you know a few podcasts. And, like you said, we're trying to be you. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, your, your show was one of the ones that we listened to. We're like, this is, this is the chemistry they have and the way that they deliver their you know their entertainment is unique and this mm-hmm. is this is really good and it was something that we you know kind of uh, modeled after early there wasn't on. a lot of podcasts that were entertaining out there i mean we just kind of went for it and we're like fuck let's well, figure sure, this out sure there is in the comedy section i mean, i think that was yeah. what was unique about what you guys were doing is you're talking about you know ufc and yeah. actually comedy at the same time yeah. like, nobody was doing that and w- what you mean by we've modeled after that is we're a fitness podcast we, health yeah. and fitness is typically what we talk about but we named it mind pump so it'd be broad so we could branch out and go the directions yeah. but you and, guys are all friends well we, yeah, we, we all met all not on initially oh wow <laughs> no we all yeah. met yeah. right before the podcast guy. yeah wow. and, uh, yeah. same yeah. similar type of chemistry we sit down and we just go and do you guys do you guys have structure to your because we have none we sit down on, we just, on, yeah. on Big Brown Breakdown there's structure where you know I do my homework the night before so that's my all fight podcast right so the night before I do my research I'll have notes on the on the wall to make sure I hit them to cover the subjects um, and but fight the fire and kid no yeah, right? yeah. we might talk about um, Kevin Spacey for half an hour or we might talk about you know lizards we have no idea mm. that would go ahead people tripped out when they that was the one thing about us was we tried to like start planning for it and then the chemistry would get fucked up yeah. so we'd have a guest and we'd be like oh we'd take all these notes and then it was awful that's yeah. it's just it's that's formulaic. the old school way of doing things because the reason one of the reasons TV when I say TV's dying it, it's scripted shows are dying like oh. talk shows are dying because it's just not organic it's not natural they don't you know I don't want to have to 
in a, I've been in this world. I don't want to have to defend Floyd Mayweather against Connor. I'm, I'm Team Connors. And they go, well, he's Team Connor. So you have to. Def- no, no, no. What? That's not natural, man. Right. And also, we don't have to move on from a certain subject amount of time. We might go an hour, three hours. Right. We'll do whatever the hell we want. That's to it. Do. How we, if we go, yeah. if we might have a talk. I don't know how many times we've had a guest and not even talk about what their profession or what we intended yeah, to we do. We try not to. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we, we get on a topic where we connect on something, I'd rather have a natural conversation and people enjoy that. Way it's more. just a discussion. But right. also, also, what you realize is that you become a better listener and you, you're actually interested in what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, and I just had this audition yesterday and things went great. And the, it's because the podcast world has helped me out so much is everyone, I'm, I'm there at this audition. Everyone has, and this is for a TV show. Um, and so everyone has their notes and they're going through it. And you can tell they're, they're thinking of the next subject and I don't give a fuck. I'm just <laughs> there to have a conversation. I'm actually engaged in what you're saying and whatever's next, I'm not worried about. I'm, I'm worried about what's happening right now. Right, mm-hmm. right. And it goes so much further. Oh, and it comes, mm-hmm. it comes across that way when you're listening. And you- it's myself. Right. If, if, if I'm just thinking of what's next, you, you're not having a conversation. Yeah. You might as well just be in a, in a booth by yourself. Have you, you, when was your last awkward interview? Have you had one where someone's just so structured, nervous like that? When was the last awkward? Awkward one you've had? Um, n- nothing. I'm firing the kid. Luckily, you know we, we usually know know them or they book good guests. Um, yeah, but like situations like this where someone's putting you on their podcast and you, you I, I don't. This is my thing. I don't do a lot of other podcasts be- because. Um, a, if I'm going to say something, I'm saying it on mine. That's where I get paid. That's mm-hmm. where my listeners are. If so, it's important. I'm going to say it on there. B, my community of friends is who I'm going to talk to because if I'm going to take time to talk with someone, I want to do it with someone who cares about me, like Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, mm-hmm. um, you know, Tony Hinchcliffe, Joe Rogan. All that; those are my guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. Joey Diaz. So we have this kind of unique family where it's not that we're this you know podcast network but we are without contracts Does that mm-hmm. make sense oh, I mean, we all, we all help each other, each other out yeah, yeah yeah so it's very rare i do someone else's pod i did stone cold steve austin's yesterday just because he's a buddy nice. and he's hilarious he is hilarious. He lives, <laughs> we basically live next door uh with you guys I, who, who's your booker where's that lady at katrina she, yeah she's not here katrina, she's not here no. no katrina give her a goddamn rate i know i know that, she is relentless awesome. katrina yeah. i don't know what they're paying you but i'll double it <laughs> she's fucking, she is a beast she's the you highest got a paid. record she is yeah. she well, is we, relentless because yeah. i again man and you guys are great and yeah. you guys know tony and but i don't do a lot of other podcasts just because um like i said i've had a day off in 17 days i'm, I'm constantly grinding if i'm gonna say something i'll, I'll go on another show yeah. and again you guys are great but she was just so on it i was like jesus christ <laughs> well we I, I tell people all the time that she's the most important role to this podcast because yeah. it is it's especially with busy guys like you if you're gonna get real guests on the show like yeah, they're fucking busy man yeah and if you guys have someone you send an yeah, email out oh hopefully it. he'll get back to me like i we i reached out to you or uh, the first time was like three years ago uh, uh, Brendan Abendejo is my buddy. Love that guy. Yeah, so he's Love that guy. he connected us uh, email. I and this was back when you were doing Fox. He connected me e- via email with you, and we never got connected. And then uh, the Fox producer, uh, he connected with him, and I actually talked to him while you guys were underneath him, and he gave me like all kinds of tips and mm. some of the success that you guys were having and what he saw because of it. So that was when we first reached out. So I've been trying to get connected with you for a long time. You were one of the first podcasts that I ever listened to. I've always been a UFC listener. Yeah. Or I love UFC. And then your guys' flavor was like nothing yeah. else. It, I mean, it, it literally was, it was great because I got to hear about what I love, which is UFC stuff, but then also the entertainment side of it. And it just, that's what you guys- I appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm glad to do it. I'm not saying that I don't want to be here. I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio, for God's sake. I got fucking time. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, usually uh, I just, I don't care, man. Like, oh, it's a big podcast. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm good, man. I'm only here because she yeah. broke my balls for like years. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, she's yeah. relentless, man. I yeah. felt like I owed it to her. Yeah. I felt wow. like I owed her some Well, shit. do you guys have someone like that? Uh, who? Do, I mean, you probably don't need it. You you're looking at them, man. Oh, you really? handle all you that. Handle all that? Me and Brian handle Man. all of it for the most part. No way. Wow. Like, like I said, we used to have a big time booker. We paid a lot of money, and they would bring in guests. We didn't know who they were. You know, I mean, it's not that we didn't know who they were. We didn't have a relationship with, so it breaks up the dynamic. Yeah. So people are like, God, that was so goddamn boring. Yeah. And it just not that ratings dip, but they didn't grow. So when things aren't growing, I'm like, we're doing something wrong here because we've never had a down month ever since we've started. Every month, it's gotten bigger and bigger. Wow. My show, the Fire and Kid, every month it's grown. And then when we had that booker, it would barely. Grow you know barely I'm like something's going on here man oh, so wow. I told Brian we gotta get rid of her we gotta get rid of the booker we're booking this actor who's on Blackish or some shit I don't watch it he's here pitching the show it was awful oh wow so we've gone through some growing pains man also you see the dynamic between Brian and I where 
you know, Brian's 50. Brian has his, not that Brian has an agenda, but he has his life, man. He's a successful comic. He's on one of the biggest shows, The Goldberg of right. all time. You know, he's a huge character there. Um, and then he has this business with me. Well, I got my own thing too. Mm-hmm. And then we have the, you know, we, we meet with Fire and the Kid. So a lot of times, just like any relationship, we're, Brian and I are basically married. Hashtag no homo. We're basically married. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so him and I have this dynamic where we need to figure things out. And it just so happens that we want to air everything. So you might, you're going to hear some animal. We're going to fight for reals. You'll hear us fight on air for reals. Brian, and, and I love Brian. Brian the other day was 45 minutes late. To, to me, it's so disrespectful. I've talked about this. Brian knows this. It's so disrespectful. So when we come on there, people are like, God, you're mean to Brian. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand, man. Yeah. He's 45 minutes late. I'm shooting this thing for showtime. So that runs into that. Right. So now you're fucking up my life. Yeah, the rest so of the that, so, so, you're, you, so we have this dynamic where I, you know, I love Brian like a brother. I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. But at the same time, we're in this relationship. And you guys, you guys we, we went through some ups and downs. Man. So as a fan, I want, I'm glad you went this way because I wanted to ask you that. Because I, I, it feels like, I mean, it, the, Fighting the Kid exploded. And you guys are both just getting more opportunities. Yeah, more do you guys him, Do you yeah. guys struggle with that? Like, dude, how should we keep the show right. going? Because I can oh, pursue my... my God. No, yeah, we... we we, we'll, we'll always do it because we enjoy doing it because, you know, one thing about, so I just got this show greenlit that I was been pitching for a while, start shooting in January, but the act and entertainment, you have no idea, man. You have no idea that that could fall at any given mm-hmm. time. Callan could, you know, Callan shot this uh, spinoff for the Goldbergs. We thought 100% it was going to get picked up. He, he, he tested high. He thought he was going to get this whole new spinoff. It didn't happen. Oh, wow. But the one thing we can always count on is the fire and the kid. Ooh. I'm never going I'm never gonna let Brian down. He's never gonna let me down. Now, touring's a different animal because we still he used to tour and then we used to tour together and then now I have my own solo stand up career, so we're Ooh. not doing a lot of fire and kid together. So how's that work? Do you start backloading episodes now or never, like when you guys meet? Never. Okay. It, it, that's, and that here's another piece of I don't know if you guys do this. Current man. B- backloading yep. episodes is a bad idea. Yep. People can s- they can, they can sense the staleness in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want to feel current. They it's want to, a terrible idea. Yeah, no. We're, uh, that's a very important. You know, let's talk about pot. We get this all the time, and I'm sure you're seeing it now because you've been in it longer than we have. It seems like everybody is heading over and doing this and thinking that they can just start up a podcast. Mm-hmm. What are some of the biggest misconceptions you think that people have getting into this space? Oh, that it's easy. I th- you know, I think they're like, oh, I'll just get on there and do it because there's no there's no regulation. There's no If you want to start in your mom's basement and you want to have you and your stepdad on your podcast, you can do it to your blue <laughs> in the face. So there's no regulation. You'll be on on iTunes, there's just there's levels to this game, and you can tell. There's right. some that are super professional and they're consistent. So being consistent is number one. I, I, I have friends who who are former fighters or current fighters. Who go, I'm gonna start a podcast. I go, cool, man. The one thing you have to do is make sure people can count on it coming out the exact same time every week. Mm-hmm. You might get busy, but in general, it has to come out. Let's say at Wednesday, it better fucking be there on Wednesday. Right. And they do it. Maybe it might be good for two weeks, and then. It cut, nah, I took two, two, two weeks off. Well, you're gone. You right. lost the crowd. Right. It's too mm-hmm. competitive, man. Yeah. Imagine your favorite TV show. You're watching Stranger Things, and he gets to uh, episode four. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, just my bad, bro. <laughs> yeah, we'll just get come you out next week. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> next Friday. My bad. You're out. To be like, continued. Oh, it's yeah. too competitive. I'm Damn out. Man. Yeah. I'll go watch Narcos. Uh, you're yeah. screwed. <laughs> it's the same thing with podcasts. No, so it, to me, you know, as, as many people as, as we reached through our podcast. I think we just broke something like 15 million downloads a month or 16 wow. million. So, and big Brown breakdown, I do once a week, I just broke around 5 million a month. So though, though you're reaching a ton of people. So you, that show is no different than a show you see on HBO, Same thing. on ESPN. Yeah. Matter of fact, you're reaching more people. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and you're connected so, more to them. Yeah, people don't realize that. I'm yeah. in your ear for three, six hours a week, for God's sake. Yeah. Right. If you're going to watch First Take, come on, man. That's not. Right, right. You, you don't care about that. It, right. it, but you need to take it as serious as if you're running a show on ESPN, HBO. That's how serious I take it. Ooh. So when someone's late, uh, if you know we have this intern, if she's late, if she's not doing things, you know, we, I fire them. This mm-hmm. is no different than you working at Fox or HBO. Right, right. Don't 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 take it for granted or look down upon it. Because for a while, people go, oh, everyone has a podcast they can do. Right. It. Granted, they can, but that's like saying, oh, anyone can have a TV show, PBS, HBO. There's a there's levels mm-hmm. to this game, man. Right, right. You were saying your show's grown every month. Were there things that you guys did? Uh, or I was just going to ask you about saw milestones. Big, yeah, big milestones or jumps or. It took us a year. To hit a million total downloads, and then we started seeing a million a month. But it took a fucking grind 
just to see that. That's how it should yeah. be. Yeah. Think, think if you guys started and right away, you got a million listeners. Yeah. That's yeah. not realistic. Even a TV show, like mm -hmm. how long does it take before it's hearsay and people go, dude, this, this podcast really good. Oh, really? Do you listen to podcasts? This podcast is just, and that's why you have to be consistent because right. you're constantly getting listeners, listeners, constantly getting listeners. So, I, so for us, it wasn't that there was like this huge jump. It's just like this tidal wave that just kept going, kept going. And, did it start to accelerate not, as it not, got bigger? Uh, yeah, it, it would accelerate, but it was just by word of mouth. And mm -hmm. may, may, it might be that this fight was coming up or I was taking people through my Andre Orlovsky camp or I was retiring or something was going on and it was just people would tune in, came this title wave. But Brian and I never, you know, waved. We, we never wavered from what we were trying to get done. Like we never changed things or, or thought things different or mm -hmm. we just kept on keeping on. Well, yeah, we have a lot of people ask us about monetization and they're always, they think that sponsorships is where it's at. And we always tell them, like, by the time you get big enough to get a lot of money from sponsorships, you should be already, you know, producing revenue off of your own stuff. How, what is your main monetization? Are you guys mainly, because you guys are so big, your sponsorships are probably huge. Is that your main monetization or is it? Apparel or uh, so I'd say all the above. I think you know it starts with advertising, where that's where we make the bulk <coughs> of our money. Um, and and but before you know, we we have a company that runs all our advertising. And that mm. you know, that's that's great money for us, man. And that's where you know we make our living. No matter what happens, is as, as far as this TV that's show, there. this TV show, uh, you know, it's comedy. That's always there. And that, that, you, Brian and I split that. But then I have relationships with other companies where like on it and some of these other companies who I was like, Hey, this is what I'm doing this is before we even got big. This is what we're doing. I want you guys to be part of this. Mm. And you know, and they grew with us. So there's some who are on all the time. Then there's campaigns and, but advertising is where the, the bulk of the money comes from. But then you have other revenues in <clears throat> advertising on YouTube and then there's merch mm. and, and merch. And again, this is, I, I don't want to say it's my fault, but any of that stuff, as far as the marketing, you see merch, advertising team like that it's all on me and in it i like it that way because if brian did it the show would just do fucking titanic uh, <laughs> just because he he's not a detailed business guy he doesn't yeah. care about that stuff he just he's like oh whatever but yeah. he can't yeah, he's, an, he's an artist yeah yeah, yeah 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 i am too but for god's sakes i'm a grown man but um you get that athlete drive yeah, yeah it's just um you know I, I, I like to be in the know on everything so when it comes to t-shirts i used to draw a lot of them and care so much about them and the fans love them. We still sell them out, but I'm not making as many. I just don't have time. Mm -hmm. So I have people reach out now to kind of help us. So I have to get better at kind of going, yeah, you handle this, mm -hmm. but I haven't found anyone who, who's been good. Have you ever been, have you always been this driven? Yeah. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. always. Cause you were an athlete UFC now this, and yeah. what, Can, where's that come from? Uh, I think my dad, my dad's a monster. He, uh, you know, he's like pursuit of happiness story. You know, he started off uh, oh, wow. divorced, diabetes, broke, bankrupt, and then just worked his way, you know, in multi-million, you know, balling, balling from real estate and started his own uh, computer program programming company and smart, smart guy. Did wow. you recognize that as a child or did you put that together as an adult later on and go like, fuck, dude, my dad was about uh, no i knew just because i saw how hard he worked and you know if he wanted something he set his eyes on it and he got it done and i remember i was in i think third or fourth grade for sure don't sign your kid up for tackle football in third grade but um <laughs> i wanted to quit because all my other friends i was good at it i was the captain of the team but all my other friends were like going out having fun playing you know in third goddamn grade i, I don't want to come to practice at three o'clock after school and so my dad goes uh practice is it Started ten minutes ago. Why aren't you there? And I go, Oh, I'm not I'm not going anymore. I don't want to do it. And I liked football and I was good at it, but I, I just want to be a kid. And my dad goes, Okay, well, we're gonna walk you know, it's right up the street, he goes, We're gonna walk up there and you are gonna let the team know you quit yeah. in front of all of them. You're not yeah. just gonna back it's out. Oh, wow. you, you you owe it to these guys. Yeah. So and he's like, like, You can do that, you just gotta tell them. Yeah, yeah I got so he walked he, he walked me up there and uh he, I, I don't know why, but he had my helmet and pads with him. I was like, why the fuck is he, <laughs> he going to do donate it to these kids? Like, why are you carrying that? And he uh, he got my coach, and my coach was like, gather around. You got to remember, I was the star of the team. And he's like, gather around. And he's like, uh, Brendan has something to tell you guys. And I'm all, oh, shit. And my oh. dad's like, go. Go. Tell him what you were telling me when we were walking up here. Go. And I started crying. And oh, he's wow. like, you want your helmet and pads? I'm like, mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> you know. Wow. What's the, what's the single best lesson he's ever given you growing up? I, I think it's more of not something, you know, saying something like go big or go home or some bullshit like that. I think it just lead by example, 
you know, and I'm the same way with my kid. And that's, I find inspiration in that. I, mm. I hate that motivational bullshit. I, motivation I, I, is bullshit. I, well, gross. well, I, I think if it helps people, I'm all about it. Wherever you get your motivation, whether it's religion or you listen to Tony Robbins, you know, t- Tony Robbins is great. And then you have these disciples from him and stuff like that. But it's all bullshit, man. They're, they're taking advantage of people's failures and their downfalls right now. They're going through tough times and trying to capitalize on that through money, investments, mm. and all this other stuff. And they're putting out this inspirational shit. What's inspirational to me is someone who just puts their head down and goes to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, To me, what's inspirational, especially having a kid now, is a father of three You know, who's a single parent. Mm. Are you shitting me? Yeah. That motherfucker should get a trophy or something. <laughs> like yeah. Being a parent's a beast or a mother of four mm-hmm. you know, single parent. Like That's inspirational to me. But people put out you know, this inspirational quotes and all this and d- does these seminars. Get the fuck out of my face with that stuff, right. man. Yeah. That's not motivational to me. No, it you know, doesn't last. Shut being, up Shut up and go. Like, right. yeah. uh, the, I'm trying to think the last time I was motivated by something or someone who said something, you guys know Jocko? I yep. think Jocko. Yeah. Would, mm-hmm. So he's a Navy SEAL yeah. for fuck's <laughs> sakes. Right. So he's walked the walk. Yeah. I'm going to listen to someone who's walked the walk in that aspect of life. Right. You know, he's so disciplined. You, if you follow him on Instagram, it's 4 a.m., 4 a.m. And I remember I used to drink a lot of sweeteners, artificial sweeteners and Diet Coke and stuff like that. I did have a Diet Coke yesterday, but I didn't eat anything all day. So give me a break here. But uh, I was drink, I was drinking a lot of artificial sweeteners and I heard him say something like, just stop. Put your like, put your foot in the ground. And just fucking stop. Make it's a don't let yourself down. Like write it down and just don't stop. I'm not gonna write it down. I'm a grown man. I don't need to write it down. But I just remember like, why the fuck am I doing these artificial sweeteners? Right. I haven't had one since. That was six months ago. Just stopped. Just stop cold mm-hmm. turkey. Just because I'm. It, it, it was good coming from him, someone of that mm-hmm. leadership or someone who's walking the walk. But mm-hmm. the, he he's leading by example because he's saying he had a problem. He stopped. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this guy who's selling me. He's not selling me anything. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. no. Well, he's yeah. empowering you by telling you to do it, right? Versus the He's motivation. also having a conversation with Joe Rogan. Right. He's, he's just having a conversation. He's not he's Selling not something. he's not trying to, you know, just stop. And you can stop at Barn no, Barn and Nobles for 14.99. You know, like it's not like that. Like he, he was just talking <laughs> as, his, as his as his personality. Yeah, the, the last guy to make to really motivate me, if you will, was uh, Justin Rand, uh, the big pygmy. Oh yeah, uh, yeah I love uh, that guy. So Good we had friend of mine. we had him on the show, and he told us this whole story. And I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, I want to fucking hug you, and I want to be a better human now. Right. From hearing what I you're mean, saying. I'm not going to Africa, but I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to Africa. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, put, I put a corner in the in the little jar. Yeah, you ten. I was like, go buy some water. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, it's so fun. I'm up. sure that'll help. Yeah. Dude, that guy has gone through some stuff, right? Oh, wow. You listen to the story like, oh my God, I'm dude, a terrible person. How many times Cannibalism, had, how many times has he had like yeah. parasites and shit? Like every single Malaria, time? Malaria, like, and then like his girl who's this dime beast. Like yeah. he yeah. brought her to Africa. I'm like, yeah. why? Like, you're the worst husband ever. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I brought, we, we slept in a hut and yeah. she yeah. had a tarantula bite her ass. I'm like, all right, man, I just, I feel like that's a bad idea. Yeah. I, I donated to some of those well and it's like you know I try to do my part I'm not going to Africa right, right. I'm yeah. just not it's not happening I don't get, you know, whatever I can do financially but yeah. uh, there's no plane there's none of that yeah. how many how many we'll guys how many guys do you still stay in touch with in the UFC do you have any guys that you like a lot and you guys hang out or you don't, you don't connect with them as I, much? I don't really hang out with any fighters I, I just don't man I uh, all my friends are comics straight up comics you don't come ac- you don't come across and this is not this is not an, an insult in any way you, you don't come across as a fighter and what I mean by that is you look like one you're a big dude obviously you got big ass hands and everything but you don't come across as one you have this kind of like you know this this nice uh, energy vibe. about you yeah. 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 yeah yeah not the mean I appreciate thing. that yeah. man um, I, I mean I, I do talk to fighters all the time like right before we sat down I won't say his name I, I got a text from a fighter about some marketing thing he wants to do so I get a, they ask me a lot of advice like mentoring and shit right yeah a, a, some advice and listen I'm not a manager I'm not an agent nor do I want to but if they're friends I help them out and tell them what I think maybe do this or do this or ask for this uh, because I you know I, I do have friends who represent some of the biggest names in business and I know what their contracts are. Um, but I, I don't really hang out with a lot of fighters. I, mm. I just don't, man. I, I, we don't have a lot to, to relate to. I'm in such a different lane now. It's not that mm-hmm. I look down on them or anything like that. They're it's just different. They're phenomenal. But it's just, yeah, it's different. Like, we're, we're just in different lanes. Who's yeah. helped you uh, with your with your stand-up comedy? Like, who, who's been mentoring you through that? Was it mainly Brian? The, or? The, for sure, the, you know, I would never not say Brian. Brian Khan, for sure, because... I, I forget. I think I was getting ready for Mitrione. I was getting ready for Mitrione, and I, I was in boxing. We're in the gym. You guys uh, oh. saw me at. Mm-hmm. I was uh, wrapping my hands, getting ready to spar. Just this monster. 
this guy walks in and I just started talking about how miserable my job is. Like just trying to make people laugh. Yeah. And I was just tra- talking about his size and his dick and what's going to happen <laughs> and all this stuff. And Brian's yes, dying laughing. Yeah. Yes. Brian's dying laughing. He goes, you know, you're going to do stand up eventually, right? And I'm like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Oh, this well, is, he called this it. This is probably five years ago. He called it. Wow. Yeah. He goes, you know, you're going to do stand up. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> and then, um, you know, Brian, we started, the firing kids started getting kind of successful. And he goes, dude, we should do a live show. And I went, have you ever listened to a live podcast? They're awful. And he goes, no, 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 we're not, no, we're not that, those guys. We're going to do a performance. I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm all about performance. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, we're going to do a show. And he goes, this is what we should do. So I went and sat and watched some of these live podcasts. I won't say their names, Good, huge shows, but they're live podcasts. I went, this is awful. We can't do this. Brian goes, no, bro, we're going to do it like this. And so he goes, uh, what I want to do is I want to shock people. You're going to come out first by yourself. And you're a really good storyteller. And I want you just to do 10 minutes of a story. If the funny story you think, whatever it is that day, I want you to come out and just do 10 minutes of it. You start sweating immediately? Not really. I was like, oh, I can tell stories like, no all problem. day. Yeah, yeah, I was really? like, yeah, I was like wow. I'll tell stories all goddamn day. No problem. And so they started booking them. Our, uh, the first one we ever did, I think, was at uh, Ontario or Brea Improv. You know, 600 people packed, sold out in like a day. And so I get up there on stage and that's all I knew. And then Brian comes out and we do our dynamic back and forth and we're, do, we're doing these skits and current events, fan questions. It goes great. And we start touring all around. And then we were in Chicago Vic Theater. It's like 1,400 people sold out. And we've had a bunch of shows by this point. And Brian goes, uh, oh, I look at Brian and go, hey, uh, I'm trying to, I need help with my story, uh, the, the story I'm going to tell. And he goes, oh, you're talking about your stand up? And I go, stand up and he just looks at me and goes oh bubba you think you think it's storytelling still no you're doing stand up i just don't want to scare the shit out of you you're doing stand up <laughs> i'm like oh my god he's he right you. and then i got nervous like, oh. <laughs> and then i bombed no <laughs> oh, shit. no I, I, it, it went good but then i just started looking at it from a different viewpoint and then we had a live firing the kid at the comedy store which we have again december 5th for the first time in a long time nice um, but we had our first one there and uh, we did our thing, went great. And probably like two weeks later, I get a text from someone at the comedy store. goes, hey, we'd love for you to do a set here. And I, I just, I was like, oh, you mean with Brian? I don't know if Brian's available. They're like, no, you idiot, by yourself. Can, do you have six minutes or eight minutes? And I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, what no one realized as a kid, my hairs were Adam, Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey. Like, uh, I was like, oh, my God, this is my opportunity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I went up there in the belly room. And, you know, you got Joe Rogan, Chris De- These are my friends. Joe Rogan, Chris D'Elia. All killers. Will yeah. Sasso, Brian Callen, just sitting there front row. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. This is a Evaluating. Yeah. My, my agent. Who oh, shit. How'd you do? Some of the beat. It went all right. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not fucking Kevin Hart over here. It went all right. <laughs> but you, I got done there like, yeah, all right, man. Yeah, all right. Right. At least yeah. you got up there. I'm like, fuck you guys. <laughs> Come on, man. So, you know, it's just, you know, about getting comfortable and getting up there. But Brian, by far, was the biggest influence, helped me the most. And then, you know, Rogan, Dalia, I'm always asking Dalia for help. And then uh, a big one who, you know, I have a similar style too. I'm not comparing myself to him, but Burt Kreischer. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I have a, a piece coming out on Comedy Central uh, next year. Um, this is not happening. And I, I tell this long story and I, actually went to Bert's house to go over it because he's a brilliant storyteller. And that's, oh, yeah. that's his stand-up yeah. of storytelling. That's mine. Yeah. So that's my style. So I told him the story and he helped me. Like He takes his shirt this, off and gets this. crazy and all that. Yeah, yeah, I don't take my shirt yeah. off, but <laughs> he just helped me with the story and it made it on Comedy Central. So it's cool, man. That's great. Man. What are, what are some of the things you're that. learning during this process Like that it's kind of sharpened your, your, your stand-up game? You, you have to do it. There, you can't have layoffs. Like if you have a layoff, Reps. it's kind of like golf. You know, like golf. Golf isn't something you just try. No. Like surfing <laughs> isn't something you just try. Like yeah. you got to fucking, you got to stay on it, man. So if I have a week off and I have a big show, I can tell I'm rusty. I'm not hitting certain points. It's not as smooth. Mm. So, you know, just, you just get reps, reps, reps. And constantly thinking. And I think. Uh, that's pretty rare to jump in and kind of do good. Like most comedians have been doing it for five or ten years True. before they start to do well. Everybody sucks for well, a long time. Is you're around all these comedians all the time, you think it's rubbing off? Uh, I don't I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's, you know. So I'm just th- good. Th- th- no, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is, man. I, I, I wish I was that cocky. I just, there's, uh, maybe this is what I was meant to do. You yeah. know, it's just something I'm comfortable up there. Uh, if I'm at, you know, I'm at the store, I brought up Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart. I have sandwich between Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart. 
like that stuff doesn't scare me. Like I just feel honored by it. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing now. And when I'm on the road, I just, I thrive in it, man. I, mm -hmm. I love it. I fucking love it. When we, yeah, we, we interview a lot of people and it seems that we always get surprised, right? If we, there's somebody we assume we're going to really like, we end up not liking them very much. Somebody we didn't think we we're going to mm -hmm. like them much, we end up liking them a lot. Does that happen to you a lot where you... You think you're gonna meet someone, you're like, oh man, like for example, like Adam Sandler or Kevin Hart, yeah. someone you get so excited, and you're like, fuck, like let down. Yeah, uh, I've never, had, not too many letdowns. I remember I was at the movie theater in Playa Vista here with my girl, and we went and saw, <clears throat> fuck, I forget what movie. It wasn't great, but uh, my girl was going to the bathroom, so I was like, oh, I'll go to the bathroom, and I'm, I'm taking a piss. And I look to my left, and I'm like, god damn, that looks like Adam Sandler. What's your hero? He could have, you know, a fucking beard like you know exactly, ISIS. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that looks like Adam Sandler. I have my dick in my hand. I'm like, for sure, don't say anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> so and don't be that hey, awkward guy. Yeah, the yeah. Hey, happy yeah. Gilmore, am I <laughs> right? <shaking> like, <laughs> <laughs> Going for a handshake. God damn it. Hey, hold on. Hey, offer him, man. I'm no, almost but, done. Dude, so I'm there pissed, and I'm like, there's no way that's Adam Sandler. And I see him wash his hands. I'm like, yeah, who washes their hands? But um, I see him wash his hands. <laughs> it's I'm like, that's, yeah, fucking wash first. Adam, that's Adam Sandler, man. And I get nervous. Like, I'm meeting the Pope, man. I'm like, oh, fuck, there's my hero. So he's with his kids. And I know how it is with your kids. Granted, I'm not as famous as Adam Sandler, but I, I get it. I'm like, I don't want to bother Protective. him. Protective. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. He's with his kids. It's just cool to even see him in person. That's so cool, man. Hopefully, I see him around the comedy circuit. And then he's walking by with his kids. And I see him looking at me. I'm like, oh, I look like a fucking psycho right now. <laughs> and uh, my girl comes out and he comes over to me and goes, you're that funny guy that kicks ass, right? I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, that's cool, bro. I was like, what? That's cool. It's hard you to make me, me nervous. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. He was the nicest guy ever. Man. Oh, that's I cool. Know. It was so cool. It's man. even cooler that he came over and said something to you, too. That oh, yeah. That had been yeah. a cool moment. There, there's been those crazy moments where um, when I first started getting to stand up, I read Judd Apatow's book, Sick in the Head. Where if you're, if you're interested in stand-up or comedy or, or just the way comics minds work, Sick in the Head is just the best goddamn book I can recommend. It's hmm. so good. There's not that many good ones, but Judd Aptow, since he was like 13, has been interviewing comics before they got big, talking about their journey. He has Seinfeld. He sits down with Seinfeld when I think Seinfeld's like 24, right when he moves to L.A. And he's this cocky dude. And he, he's this young kid, Judd Aptow. He's interviewing him. Jim Carrey, you name it. Roseanne Barber, she got big. Oh, wow. But it's brilliant. Uh -huh. So I read his book, and that's what helped me deal with stand-up and writing the whole process. And then for this is uh, this is not happening in Comedy Central, you go through all these kind of auditions where you're at the comedy store in the belly room and you're telling your story with other comics. And out of whatever the 20 comics tell stories, they pick like four to actually do it. So you go through this elimination process. So I'm going through that process. They're like, I would change this. I'm going back and forth. It, you know, it's months and months go by. And... Um, we have Judd Aptow, his publicist reached out to me and goes, hey, would you, would you like Judd Aptow? I'm like, fuck yes. That, that guy's one of my heroes, man. He's brilliant, all the movies he does. So he comes on the show, and that same day, I find out I'm going to be on Comedy Central. So that morning, and they tell me the day of, so that morning I'm with Judd Aptow, who influenced me in stand-up. That night I'm shooting for Comedy Central and find out. Wow, it was wow, just like this, universe, man. this perfect storm. Yeah. yeah. That was Jesus. I told him that. He, Jesus, yeah. I told him that, and he was like. Team fireproof. He's like, very yeah. cool, man. Anyways. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good dude. He's uh, coming back on, uh, I think, how, uh, next week. How different are comedians hanging out with comedians versus hanging out with fighters? Because oh, it's, it's got to be so, it's got to be a total different, <laughs> probably like, a lot more it's fun. It's like the Geico commercial. It's like hanging yeah. out with the caveman or, you know, hanging out with, <laughs> not, not to shit on fighters, but yeah. listen, if you're a world-class fighter, there, there's there's not that many layers to you. There's a reason why I wasn't a world champion, man. You know, like <laughs> you, you're not, fun, you know, Cain Velasquez, go, go have a bear with him. It's a fucking bore. You know, but, <laughs> but in the octagon, he'd beat the brakes off me. You know what I'm saying? So um, you, you talk to any of these guys, there's not a whole lot of layers. But um, comedians with, have a lot. Oh my god, dude! Uh, and they're the, dark as fuck. Right? Some yeah. some of the funniest nights I've ever had have been. You know, their stand up's great, but you get Chris D'Elia, Brian, and Will Sasso together, man, or you know, in Rogue, oh, and shit. it's just. I mean, we, so Chaos. we'll do our sets, and then we'll go eat. You know, uh, next door, and it, it's it's the best time ever. Like I'm in tears laughing. Oh, I was gonna that. say that's probably funnier than the actual stand up. By shit. far, oh, by god. far. Brian, oh, probably the darkest humor. I'm assuming, right? Because yeah. comedians are it's just to make so each other silly. Laugh. It's it's yeah. like one up, and man, I don't even chime in. I just sit there and it's just, it's ridiculous, wow. man. They're so talented. It's crazy. Have you had a set where you've bombed real hard? Oh, yeah. Just, what's oh, that yeah. like? Uh, it's just embarrassing that you get in your car. I remember. But how do you know? Just nobody laughs. Oh, you know. Oh, you, you, know. <laughs> you know, man. You know. 
Oh, oh my yeah. God. It's going to come know, at you. It's not like, did you, that go well? <laughs> no, it's like like a kick in the dick. Like, Do you like, oh, wrap that it up? hurt? You wrap no, it up. No, I power through it. Oh, like, you damn. bitches are going to listen to me. <laughs> I had yeah. a set at the Laugh Nobody's Factory. Leaving. And uh, it was like Armenian night. It was a Tuesday night at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm just looking for reps. It's like a year ago, probably a year and a half ago. And I get there and there's like seven people in the crowd. And these Armenians are there, I guess, not to laugh. Like they didn't laugh at anyone. <laughs> they were just like standing there like this. I'm like, this is not, not going to go well. Yeah. So I, I do my thing. And there, there, I mean, there's it's crickets. <laughs> I get in the car and, and you know I get done and the the showrunner she's gone now bless her heart and she's just like yeah it's just it's one of those nights you know I'm like yeah I guess and I get in my car and I'm like what the fuck am I doing with my life man like that was awful oh, like that was a straight bomb fest and that's happened it yeah. just but it, you seem you like do? the type that that would motivate you uh it motivate where I'm like I got like the next day I went back over my material and I'm like yeah oh, we can't have this happening right man. I figure you're like a fighter like yeah, you get, it's like, like getting losing right yeah, you get yeah. your ass kicked no one wants to get let loose watch but the game it's film. not like you quit yeah. fighting after no, that no hell no you don't you just don't want to feel that again it is the worst, the worst. <laughs> oh, I'm lucky cuz I've had a lot of those situations but I've had a few mm. and it's weird cuz a lot of comics you know I've talked to Delia about this I've talked to um Callen and, and some other guys, you know, with, when you go to open mics and you're, you're at a bar, or you're at a Baskin Robbins or Red Robin or some shit, and they're not there for comedy, and, but they're not even listening and engaging. And you're mm-hmm. like, you know, a lot of people like to come up through that way. And Brian's like, I don't, I don't know if, I don't think that's the best route, especially for a guy like you. I, I just don't think that's, that's meant for you. I think what you're doing is exactly how your path is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like right now you're, you're living your dream or do you still even feel like you're chasing your dream? Ah, uh, man. I don't know. That's a great question, man. I don't know. I, Cause I didn't, I couldn't think of this. I didn't, you know, when I was a kid, granted I wanted, and my dream was to be on Saturday night live, but I don't know if I'll ever be content, man. Hmm. I don't. I, I think I remember I was like, Oh, if I could just keep, do sets at the store, I'm be happy. And then that happens. And it's like, Oh, if I could just sell out this on my own, then that happens. Uh, oh, if I could just buy this car and then that happens and it's like the next thing. So I don't know if I'll ever be content, man. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know right now, uh, like I'm in the process of, of buying a house. I'm looking at all these places over here and I'm like, oh man, w- once I hit this mark, I get this house. It's going to be, I, I bet I'm going to be cool now. It's just, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I just, I don't think I'll ever be content. I don't, and I think, you know, the goal is to, for a Netflix special, whenever that happens, that's kind of the home run. Right. Mm. Well, you can't stop there. You're just going to have one. No, there's no way. So yeah. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like you have to have kind of self talks about, like, hey, I need to enjoy this process and not just always be focused on goals? Because typically that's what you get with someone who's so driven. Sometimes it's hard to actually stop and smell the roses. <laughs> yeah, they don't 100%. Reflect. Yeah, that's my biggest problem. So um, I can't say the network or exactly what's going on, but. I pitched this show and it got greenlit, which is hard to do in this town. And so it got greenlit. I start shooting in January. It's a big deal. It's my own show oh, on a cool. huge network. Oh, All right. Good yeah, for you, thanks, bro. Man. And um, I text Brian and he goes, I know you. Please fucking realize how hard this is to do mm. and just – just realize that this is something Enjoy special. It. And I go, well, it'd be something special if it's a hit. Like if it, if it goes for <laughs> four or five seasons, it's a hit. He's like, you're an idiot. And I'm like, I don't know what, how else to, how else to take it in, man. Like uh, yeah. when I, when I found out it's going, I'm like, Oh, that's cool, man. And I'm like, God, hopefully. And I'm just start thinking like, Oh, you don't want to end up like this. Now guy. the process like, sure begins again. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, it has to be a home run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you find peace? Uh, through my son. Mm-hmm. Through my son, when I go home, you know he's the best man. The mm-hmm. best kids are the best. But before him, I don't. I don't know if there's peace. And before, you know, even even with him, sometimes, you know, I find myself like thinking about something else where you got to be present. But you have to be present with him. You know, you can't let him die. Like just don't. Just be a good parent. Don't let him fucking run into traffic. So you have to be. <laughs> you have to be present with the with the little one. And he forces me to do that. But you know, even sometimes that's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a challenge because I'll just I'll just think about work nonstop, nonstop. How What's, much is he you? Is he is he all you? What do you think? He's all me. Yeah, yeah. Is all he? Me. We look identical. What's that like? What's that like? Almost seeing like a reflection of yourself. Like, what about his habits? Do you it's see scary. yourself? It's scary. It's scary because you, does anyone here have children? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got, got two. two. Everybody, two. everybody but me. There you go. So <laughs> none that we know of. You guys know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know how it is. So with kids, it's it's scary because you know what the world's like, and you know when, 
I think now when there's like these terrorist attacks or these mass shootings, like it affects me so much more than it used it's totally to. Totally different. When it's just me, ah, whatever, we're more man. scared now. I whatever. Know. But with him, I'm just like, oh my god, like yeah. I'm terrified of everything. And I, you know, I only let three people watch him besides me. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, his mom, his grandma, and our nanny. Outside that, no one touches the kid. No one can see him. Uh, not not see him like family can see him, but you're not getting him alone. I'm I'm constantly worried about. You hear all these horror stories. Mm-hmm. So yeah. for me, I'm just scared of the world and. Like, I don't want him to go through some of the same process that I went through. Mm. I like, and you know, you, you see like me how? now. Um, I was talking about this with my girl the other night. Like, um, you know, f- football, football is my, you know, dream for me as a kid. It was a rough road, man. It was a rough road. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to sound bitter or anything like that. But when I went to the University of Colorado, like, I never in in Joe Klopfenstein, who's the team captain, first round draft pick, stud, my best friend. He he would vouch for this. I just never got out of it what I put into it. But meaning, um, God, I don't have to say this about people. Like, come on, bro. I just um, I worked my tail off, man. I was I was good. I was fucking good, man. And um, for whatever reason, it just never lined up for me. Hmm. And and again, it put this chip on my shoulder, made me who I am. But it was tough nights, man. It was tough nights when, um, you know, we were in Nike school and Nike would send, and uh, people are going to be rolling their eyes at this, but for, for a guy like me who's sensitive, it was a big deal. It, it made me feel almost like less than or, or, or like a, a second-class citizen. When Nike would send this special gear and it, they'd have 20 pairs of these shoes or 20 pairs of this jacket, and they'd give it to 20 guys around me, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't get one because for whatever reason I wasn't good enough to them or something like that. Well, when you're constantly seeing that, and as a kid, I got on the basketball team. We got new jerseys, and they gave everyone new jerseys but me. Those those put these chips on your shoulder, and you feel lesser than. And at University of Colorado, Colorado, it made me feel like that, and I don't want to feel like that. Mm. So, like with fashion, people make fun of me in fashion with shoes. A lot of that's from that, not having it and feeling lesser than, or it's the car I drive, oh, feeling bros. lesser than. Does that make sense? Oh, so, yeah. that's, that sounds a lot. That's my yeah. story. So, for sure. so, so I don't want my son dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Like I felt I, a lot of times crying at night, man. Like it was, it was rough. That's some, so I grew up, I'm the oldest of five, and I mean, we grew up food stamp poor. Yeah. And a lot of my styles of stuff I pay, it's because I didn't have those things. Yeah. And I worked really hard to get to that point to where I could afford that. And I think I don't even have a kid, but my biggest fear would be to spoil him because I didn't have everything. And I now, now that I'm in a position to do that, yeah, you don't want to go the opposite direction. Right. And, and I now, and I have an uncle who has two kids that are 25 wow. and 30, and they private schools, went to the best colleges, and they, and he's, and now they're both working for his company. He's still, he's still paying for them at 25 and 30. Are they good kids, though? Are they good human beings? They are good human beings. And it's all good. Yeah. They're good. Like, human- not, not everyone's meant to go through that struggle. And- you know, be Tony Robbins or Cain Velasquez or Nate Diaz or Ronda Rousey's or Brian Callens of the world or Joe Rogan's like, you know, pressure makes diamonds. But a lot of times those are great people, too, man. They don't you know, the world needs those people. Yeah. They don't need to see the, the bad in the world and go through the same trials and tribulations we went through. Would you My dis- son's not. Yeah. Guarantee you that. Would you discourage him from playing football? <sighs> I don't. It, well, the information on football is so much different now. When it's we, when different, we kids, but, but it's, it's different. But at the same time, is it? Does yeah. it change anything? Like it's right. football. It's always for been God's there. Sakes. That's yeah. like being upset. Michael Phelps gets wet in the pool. Like, yeah. Of course, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, of course, you're going to get now. wet. Yeah. So yeah. in football, uh, what you're talking yeah. about these giant behemoths running each other is not healthy. Yeah, like that's no not going to cause right. any I harm. I didn't need. We knew that 50 years ago. Yeah, I don't need Dr. Anderson tell me how bad it's for your brain. We kind of knew it. Like everyone's like, what? Like, come on. So with my son. Um, and I'm fortunate enough where I've, I've been around at such a high level and it was my life for so long. I've seen so many other players. If he has a gift, I'm going to let him run with it. Sure, right. If you're just fucking average Joe Blow, let's find something else to do, my man. This ain't for you. <laughs> we're going to have to, I'm going to take you out and we're going to f- well, focus on something else. I struggle with that too uh, w- because like I went through football and had the same kind of a thing where I realized I wasn't good enough. Like I wasn't going to go anywhere with it. And like, should, should my son go through this and get beat up and go through that same process? You know, but it's like, I learned so many things from being on a team and going through those struggles high and school? contributing high school, then college. You, where'd you play college? While? I had Trinity. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like big as like yeah. NAIA. Yeah. 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 Uh, see, high school is a little high school. Yeah. Do your thing. It's high school for God's sakes. Yeah. But as far when, now, when you get to college, if you're not getting scouted by anyone, you're just gonna walk on or something like that. I don't know, man. Yeah, I would say focus on your education because that, that level guys are hitting too. 
they're hitting in it. It's also big. football. You're going to major in football. So I, I was a double major in business sociology. I majored in football, though, man. It, you, if you're playing a major Division One school, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what they tell you. It's, it's the most job. corrupt business in the world. Yeah. It a job. It you're working overtime. It's my life. Yeah, it's yeah. nonstop, big time football. They don't care about anything else. So right. if my again, if my son doesn't have the gift, dude, go to go to Stanford, go mm-hmm. something else, and focus on your education because yeah. I guarantee that's going to pay off down the road. Dude, can you Football's talk? Not can you talk about yeah. that a little bit? I had a buddy that uh, played for Chico during the World Series years for them, and he was like, it was, school wasn't even school. <laughs> He's like, literally, and everything was free in town. You didn't have to go to class ever. That's Coach would sit down and, and literally pass out your grades pack. Dude, we, I, I remember I had a, two stories for you guys. Uh, I remember when I first got to campus, I had this guy. He was from Louisiana, uh, actually played for the Buffalo Bills. Phenomenal player, captain on our team. And um, I got to school, and I, I didn't realize how bad it was. And, you know, he got in for, you know, who knows how. And we're, we're going over something. He goes, hey, Shab, how do you spell chair? I, so, I started, I went, yeah, can you imagine? And he's dead serious. And he's like, for reals, motherfucker. I'm like, oh, uh, C-H-A-I-R-O-K. Ooh. He got his degree behind me four years later, which I was like, are you shitting me? But um, wow, wow. To, to that point where the privilege in playing Division One, I, I remember we had a uh, – the way it works is when you sit down with your athletic advisor, they give you classes where they know the teachers are going to be football friendly and mm-hmm. they're going to, they're going to know your schedule and they're actually support the program. So this one class and it was the worst. Cause I'm like, no, I, I don't need the dumbass classes. Like, mm-hmm. please give me an education. Oh, you had to ask for it. Oh my God. No, that's shit. why I double major. I'm like, this is so easy, man. Let me do this. Let me do this. Oh, so wow. they oh. would give us the football friendly teachers. So they gave us this teacher and it's me and six guys and we have a huge game coming up and uh he go he gives out the test and then he goes oh you guys go into this room and all the students know so we go into this one room it's me and six other guys all uh, football players all football players and all them are studs and he just puts down one test and goes you guys just talk about amongst yourself and i'll take one test and well these guys you know didn't do their homework in the least bit, so they're all staring at me. <laughs> so I'd go uh, A, B, or C, fellas, <laughs> and like I think I think we had a C. Like what the, the fuck, fuck, man? Yeah. Let's we got to better, C, like, guys. Hey, fuck you guys, man! <laughs> you you got an F, a C. <laughs> I just I brought you best, you assholes. <laughs> what do you care? Oh, wow, that that crazy, yeah. huh? Oh, and, and you know that's at University that's of Colorado. Funny. We were good, but we're not like. Uh, Florida State or Alabama. Right, uh, right. Mm-hmm. That's why my respect for Stanford, who has, they keep the academic at such a high standard, yet they still ball out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's so impressive. Right, right. Like my son's not going to Ohio State or Alabama. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you're going to Stanford. You're going to learn something. You're gonna, US, yeah. You need to go to UCLA something, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's it was crazy. a bummer, though, too. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And then you get your degree, you know, and some people are like, once you get a degree, you get a job. Yeah. Like, not right away. Really, no. That degree's a paper degree, Worth man. That guy shit. doesn't know shit. Right. This guy can't spell chair, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he can't spell <laughs> chair. And he has the same degree <laughs> as me. What the fuck do you think he's going to do in life? Oh, uh, yeah. shit. That's nuts, man. Nuts, yeah. man. It's that's a bummer. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. What's the most challenging thing about being a dad? Um, Man, that's a great question. Just not fucking up. You want to make sure you're doing the right thing, you <laughs> oh, know? Yeah. Um, my my girl, she's she's Latin. She's super uh, strict on them, and, I, and I'm not. I think when Are you the to, pushover? Yeah, big time. I think <laughs> when it comes to sports and academics, I'll be the strict one. But when it comes to life, no. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm the biggest pushover ever with them. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think it's just not fucking up. Make sure, you know, because you don't want to raise a loser. Could there be anything worse? <laughs> yeah. He's just this loser. Like, he's that Direct guy. Reflection like, he's you. that guy with yeah. the with the private account on Instagram talking shit to famous people. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. him. That's my son. Yeah. That'd be the fucking worst. Just the like, egg so, uh, dude, avatar. Dude, sometimes yeah. I'll get uh, trolls on the uh, internet, Instagram like that, and it will be a picture with their kid. And it's very rare I see it or respond to But if I see a kid, I will respond to DM them and go, Bro, saw your comment. You're a dad. Imagine when your son's 15. Tell your son that you hated on someone more successfully. For what? 
Right. For what, man? Right. You're yeah. fucking up. Do better as a person, Dude. as a father. And usually they respond like, oh, shit. Like, oh, you're, you're right, right, man. This is embarrassing. I'm like, yeah, it is, man. That's you're what was, a dad. That's what would scare me about yeah. being a parent right now is thinking about social media in the future. Because I think social media is just fucking It's a up. blessing and a curse. Right, right. If you're, yeah, if you're using it for business, it could be a huge blessing. But most people are consuming it, right? Yeah. And well, be- well, it, it's shaping the minds of, it's, it's, especially if you have a girl, if you have a daughter, for, from you know, it's shaping the minds of young women because they see Kylie Jenner and that's not real. Right. That's not Instagram's not real. Did you see that's that? eight seconds out of my day. That is not real. Did you see that sugar app? Did you? See, it's downtown Sunset Boulevard. Was it called Sugar? It's called Sugar Sh- Girls. Sugar oh, Girls. Sh- sugar, like sugar Girls. They have an app now for uh, girls to uh, that, to have guys pay for them. To, yeah. do, to put their clothes yeah, like on the Amazon yeah. account. Like Sugar Baby? Like Sugar Daddy. Like is that sugar, what it was is called? It, is? it might be sugar called Sugar Baby. baby. It yeah. might be called Sugar Baby. Uh, it was, I don't know. Have you have you heard of this? I've heard of Sugar Babies, uh, but uh, so they but not the app. I've heard of like the girls that do it. Uh, have you heard of Toilet Girls? No, no. What? What? No, what's that? Well, Toilet Girls, a girl, and I used to, this is long ago. That sounds ago. terrible. I know. You ready for this? <laughs> oh, I'm about to drop some knowledge on yeah, some Here we go. So I used to date this girl who did this. I couldn't understand it. She was like a model and she would leave and go to dubai or the middle east for like two Uh, months and then come back and just be fucking loaded gold rolexes like chains and stuff hmm. and and she goes oh i sell this app over there it's only available over there i'm like that makes sense yeah no doubt (laughs) and i found out uh, a friend of her friends like no she's a toilet girl i'm like what the fuck's that and she goes well these guys with this oil money these middle eastern dudes have so much money, they pay these American like Instagram famous models to fly over there, and they just treat them like complete shit. Piss on them, fuck them. What? All the homies ride wow. a train on them, wow. but they pay them big time, really handsomely. Like yeah. I'd be a toilet boy maybe, but they <laughs> they hook these girls up, man, uh, and then you know they, they give terrible. them whatever a hundred grand, and Dude. then they go back. So I've heard uh, of this, but I've never met somebody who's actually met a girl who actually yeah, bummed me out. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. fuck, that's not your yacht. Like she was just her on the yacht, I'm like. Yeah. Where do you even get something like that? Little did, did I know that there's a bunch of fucking Saudi guys with oil money underneath just, just with their shit. dicks out. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Toilet girls, look it up. Popular here? I don't think so. I don't. Th- I, I mean, the escort service here is popular. So it, then it, what's Sugar Babies? What is Sugar Babies? Sugar Babies is a girl who's younger who has an older guy that takes care just of takes her. Care of her. But the, you know, it's not that they're in a relationship. He just takes, pays her bills, probably puts her up in a place, gives her a car. But you, I mean, you're paying handsomely with that mouth and ass. Yeah, that. you know, I, what I'm I, I, mm-hmm. my old partner. So I started up uh, two of the first medical marijuana clubs in the in the Bay Area. Tight move, right? That was like uh, six years ago. One of the first ones to do that. And uh, our partners in it. This guy had big money from overseas, and he's he was in uh, recycling metal, and he used to have like he was married, four kids, but he had like. Seven girlfriends, apartments, car, and, and then we had then we had a he had his, he had a fucking huge bouncer. Dude used to play this guy Rodney used to play in the NFL, and he was like two eighty five, jacked, and he was like forty something years old, but just a fucking gorilla, dude. And he would uh, and he was this nicest dude ever. But he would send him over if a girl was fucking act, not acting right and shit, and he'd drive over there and just fucking repossess the car. Jesus Christ! Oh, it was gangster right there, and then business. replace her, then another you one. Know what, you know what's about being a parent? That's someone's dog. I know, uh, right? Those are human again, beings. You don't think again, about that when you're not a dad. Don't yeah. fuck it up. Oh, like right, you want to yeah. be a shitty parent? That's what happens. Right. Yeah. That's one you're of losing. the options. Yeah. You're losing. Yeah. You're you took an L for life because your daughter's a toilet <laughs> yeah. girl. Oh, the oh. First, I, two two things happened to me when I first became a parent. First off, I started driving slow, which I never did yeah, before. Shit. Never did before. I had got tickets like crazy. All of a sudden, I'm driving slow. And the second thing, you know, when you don't have kids and you see some, you know, girl dressed with, you know, <laughs> real revealing or whatever, you're like, damn, she's hot. I'm starting now when I see them, like, you have a daughter? Yeah, I have a daughter. Now I look at that, I'm like, her poor fa- yeah. Oh, I know. It's her like, poor God parents. damn, that's What are you brutal. doing? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you dressed like that? The other thing is you do uh, pros and cons. Like, this company sent me a. Um, a uh, slingshot, so it's two wheels in the front, one wheel on the back, and I was scooting all over town in that thing. It was so much fun, and I got on the PCH, and I'm like, God, it's not that safe, is it? Like, this car almost came out. I'm like, there's no airbags. There's nothing, and then I was having fun with it. They would come get it like two days later. I was thinking about buying it because I was having so much fun with it, and I, I hit it into fourth gear, and it spun out, 
and I'm sitting oh, on shit. PCH, staring at the oh. cars coming at me. And luckily, I'm you know I'm like this. There's no, I'm like no 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 no. no. I'm, I'm like thinking about ditching and running. It was a terrible idea. It was like a scene out of Mission Impossible Seven where the fuck they're on. <laughs> and so I but turn it, it I turn it back yeah. around and they start going slow. And I was like, oh, I'm done with this, man. I'm <laughs> all the shit I've been through. Can you imagine like you know you my, my son foot. Tiger? Like <laughs> dad was in the NFL, college football, UFC, comedy worldwide. Oh how he died. I one of those slingshot things you know it's just a bummer like that's how it finally got him like a fucking slingshot yeah. on the pch yeah he spun around ran over him like it's a bummer it's like so, what's his face getting killed by the stingray right dude oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, out of yeah. all the dangerous <laughs> shit. son of a bitch and it was just like uh for him that was just like oh check out the stingray oh, oh, fuck. Out of like, game over yeah. <laughs> he's dealt with so much dangerous shit yeah. that was me the slingshot and i was like come get it right now i don't want it man yeah. don't yeah. put that around it definitely me. changes you what yeah. do you think you know uh when we started podcasting Podcasting. We talk about this all the time that the three years we've been doing this, I've grown more in the three years getting a chance to talk to so many great people and brilliant minds. Uh, have you noticed a lot of growth in yourself being able to do the same thing, like interviewing all these 100%. Guys? Yeah, I think it just makes me a better person. I think, um, you know, just talking to people and getting their process and and you realize that successful people or these people, whether they're celebrities or successful athletes or whatever the hell they're doing or huge producers in Judd Apatow or comics – Everyone's the same. Everyone's going through the same struggle. Everyone has the exact same problems. Everyone has the same stress. Do talk about that because this is something I try to tell people all the time because we we fantasize about being these people that are up uh, that are up making millions of dollars. And what I have found that more often than not, they're some of the most fucked up people with the deepest, darkest secrets and issues. Yeah, I, I got to be honest though. The richest people I know are the most depressed people I know. Mm. Got to be honest. The richest guy I know is super depressed Crazy, it's right? just it's I, you know i don't know what it is but you know they, they all have the same problems man beyonce and jay-z have problems just like anyone else or drake or any of these people so um it, it, that's why you got to be careful you know looking up to your heroes you know when they say don't meet your heroes i, I find that to be true but also when you meet them it also humanizes them where right. you're like mm -hmm. oh they're just the same they're the exact fucking same mm -hmm. man right mm -hmm. they, there's no different they just made this choice or they did this you know, in comedy or whatever, even in fighting in sports, you know, the, you can tell why someone's successful, why they're out where that. Look, you look at Joe Rogan and his work ethic and how relentless he is. And I see how good of a father he is. Like, mm. you know, after I get done with a tour, I'm exhausted, man. And I remember Rogan got done with this tour and I call him to ask him how it went. And he goes, I'm good, man. I'm I just landed. Uh, I've been up all night, you know, with my tour. Uh, I'm taking my kids to Disneyland. I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. And so he got right, right plane, away. took his wow. kids, went to Disneyland. was there the whole day, did a podcast later that night. He's just... You know, you look at his work. It's not a mistake. Yeah. He, yeah. Joe Rogan's not a you know a Richard Pryor. He's so talented where you just fly by the coat. He, he his work ethic is insane, man. And people go, oh, I could do that. I don't know if you could. Right. Also, yeah. uh, <laughs> the reason why he's so successful. I don't know if you would be willing to sacrifice what he said. I don't know if you're willing to get up like he gets up or do the research at night like he does or be at the comedy store every single night like he is. Or, you know, in Chris D'Elia, everyone goes, oh, he's goofy. Yeah, Chris is goofy. Chris is super goofy. Chris is also the most disciplined person I know. Out of Even out of any athlete I know, Chris is more disciplined than any athlete I know. Chris oh, wow. doesn't drink doesn't eat fast food, has never done a drug in his life. He does stand up every night, seven days a week, three times, three times a night. What? No way. Every night. God. Every night. So, Damn. so what do you want to do? You, you, oh, you, you think that's by because he's goofy selling out? No, <laughs> yeah. no that material comes Working up with his craft. That material comes up with an Instagram, and he now he has a podcast Sharpening. and his merchandise. People, this it's not by accident. Mm -hmm. there, there's no accidents. Accidents are people like uh, Paris Hilton who who have one reality show or Jersey Shore. That's an accident. That's not talent. Right, or the yeah. Kardashians. That's the different. But you know the, these people who have these talents and their work ethic. I, I just find it mind blowing. Mind -blowing. I, I, I also think yeah. i mean uh, it, like in fitness you know we were we've been in fitness for a long time and people always come to us and said i want to lose weight or i want to and you ask them why 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 and ultimately they'll tell you it's because they want to be happy but really the, the source of happiness is not the goal it's the it's the it's the the path yes. it's the journey it's the process yes and so it, it, what i've seems that what it seems to be evident to me when i meet people like this is it's not so much that they're driven because they want to reach a particular goal. They're driven because they're also enjoying the, per the, the process. Yes. They love the process. And that seems to be the secret. And you, you talked about the depressed, you know, super rich, wealthy person. 
you know, there's people in. in well, otherwise, people. otherwise you identify with it. You identify so much with the success that if it goes away or the money fades or changes, the process you can always have. A we were we yeah. interviewed this kid yesterday, right? Two point something or four million followers on Instagram, and he's 28 years mm-hmm. old like that. And uh, this kid, anxiety, just broke down crying yeah. in the middle of the podcast. What's he do? So Bradley Martin, you know who that is. So he's a he's YouTuber a, or something? Yeah, he's a YouTuber and a fitness celebrity guy that, you know, got got famous through social media. He got That's cool. He got fam- yeah. yeah, it's very he's got a cool story and he's got a great heart. Really good kid, dude. Yeah. And, nice guy. But you you we, you see him we interview him yesterday. Cry he, baby, but nice guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> he breaks down, but you could yeah. see cuz he had it all bottled up because he, sure. he identifies so much with it cuz before that yeah. he didn't have any fame. All of it and it just blew up like overnight. All of a sudden he becomes this celebrity on social media on Instagram. Two million YouTube, two million. No one teaches how to deal with that. No, no. And he's like, I mean, literally, you could see it in his eyes when we walked up. Like, I was like, man, this is going to be a weird interview because this really can't yeah, look, energy couldn't look us in the like eye. Shaky, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Poor guy. Yeah, how old is he? Twenty eight. Well, not young, but he'll figure it out. No, yeah, you could tell that was yeah. what happened. So we started talking to him, and you know, it, w- it ended up being a great interview afterwards, yeah. but. You could just see this poor guy has attached himself so much to that. He's just trying to navigate through it. He'll probably come out the other side all right. Yeah, yeah. No, he's killing it. I mean, yeah, he's that's a beast. Yeah, no, he's killing it right now with everything he's doing. You could just, but he, he's struggling with that. And I think, yeah, that, there's a difference between killing it career wise and then killing it in life, isn't oh, there? Oh, fucking, fucking, yeah. fucking yeah. A. There's like a for pure him, difference. His, it doesn't sound like he's killing it as far as his personal life and with himself. Like, I don't give a fuck if you have 30 million followers, you have a good podcast. Like, the, a lot of times people aren't content with their life. You Bro, know? most people that are at that level that we meet, I feel like, are very lonely. Yeah. you would, I mean, and all these other people that are looking up, thinking like, oh, I just want to be them. I just want to meet them. Like, do you have no idea how lonely these motherfuckers are? Yeah, I think it just depends. I don't, I don't, I don't know this guy. I don't know what it took for him yeah, to get yeah. there. But um, what does it take for someone like you to break your circle? Like, what do you, when you meet people? Because I'm sure everybody wants a piece of you. Everybody wants to talk to you at this at this point in your your career and stuff. Wants to hang out. Wants to talk to you. Wants to be your friend. What what attracts you to another human being? That like I would now pick up the call and talk to this guy. I don't know. That's a good question. You have some good questions. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's rare I do that. I think. You know, I meet so many people. I can usually tell people with good intentions, stuff like that. But if I'm home, if I'm in L.A., I'm a homebody, man. I'm, I'm really not out. I have my store at the comedy – or my set at the comedy store. I'll do that, and I go home. I'm not I'm not, I'm not a big social guy outside of this. Mm-hmm. I'm not be, – I think because my work is my social life. Like this, to me, like – I don't need to go out and have beers tonight or go out and get hammered. Right, we, we just, we yeah. just chopped did it up for two yeah, hours. Just, I'm all set, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just yeah, did it. So I get my, check those boxes off with my work, right. which most people don't. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm good. There's no happy hour. What the fuck mm. with the happy hour? No, we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my happy hour, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Looking ahead, what's, what's in, what's, what's in your future? What's your ultimate dream? Uh, Netflix special would be the home run, but I still won't be happy or content. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the show that I'm going to start doing in January, hopefully that's a hit and that goes well. Can you talk about it at all? Or is that still something we got? Um, I mean, I don't tell anyone. No, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just my know. millions of listeners. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's something where people are going to be like, why? That's out of left field. Yeah. What, a, a show that I'm waiting to find out if I got will be out of left field where people are like, damn, I can't believe he's doing that. This one's like, oh, that makes sense. Okay. So I can tell you that. Uh, I pitched the show with something I was thinking of. It's something I'm kind of already currently doing just based on TV now. So Okay. Yeah, man. Great. That's, that's what fucking what awesome. do you think yeah. about, uh, I know you're the business mind in, in Fighting the Kid. What do you think about like Netflix and the evolution of business? I find it very, it. I think it's very it fascinating. Great? I love it. I find it fascinating. I think it's right up our alley. And I think, you know, when I was in Australia, I was talking to a promoter there and he goes, you know, the, the dynamics of entertainment is just changing because, you know, there's bigger name guys than you, but they're they're older. So mm-hmm. when they mm-hmm. come out to Australia, I have to buy billboards, I have to do radio spots, he has to do on media tours, and it costs me a lot of money. A guy like you, who understands social media and has a digital presence, Fast. he goes, You know how much money I spent for you to sell out all these theaters? I go, How much he goes, it's zero. Like nothing. Yeah. You did it yourself on your podcast. Yeah, you wow. got the Which, tribe already yeah. established. So he goes, yeah. he goes, the you know, the podcasters, the YouTubers, people, these young comics who understand social media make so much more money than these older huge names because they don't get it. Do you think it's oh. going to change this town? I was going to say, Hollywood's gonna Hollywood, let's talk about that. Um, I mean, less people are going to be getting you know jacked off on now that that's out there. But I, think, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I can't be happy. Dude, I hear these stories and I'm like, fuck you guys, dude, man. This and guy's I'm, driving I'm, around. He's like, pedophile, pedophile. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. like, oh my God. You know, I, mean, I love seeing like the, this new breed of you know people coming out through YouTube and Netflix and 
you know, kind of self-promoting, building themselves up because it used to be like this good old boys club. Like you couldn't get your voice out. You couldn't do anything unless you went through. Which I love. It, yeah, me well, too. For, for a guy like me, especially at Fox and I might dispute with them. I'm like, this ain't 1997. <laughs> You're not going to shut me down. What the <laughs> fuck? What do you mean you shut me down? I'm going to do my own shit. I'm bringing my entire tribe with me. We're just yeah. going over here, man. Uh, There's bad. not seven channels. You're not CBS and I'm on PBS now. Yeah. Dude, I'm fucking out. Tell man. me tell me what that conversation was like. That had to feel fucking good to know that walking in. The it, 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 so remember, though, when I make these decisions, I don't consult with Brian. I just do it. I'm like, hey, we, yeah, we're fired from Fox. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Click. Um, <laughs> I just I, I I go off what I think's right and what my instinct is, and I always bank on myself and Brian, and we always have. We got to this point, you know, with, through the contract where I didn't want your money. Just let me do my thing, and I reap the benefits from it. Okay, do that. Then it gets big, and then you know, at the time, I I just didn't like the the way this guy who's gone now, uh, Jamie Horowitz, who he might be a good guy, but just the way he would talk down to me, I'm like, oh, this isn't gonna work, man. You think you're better than me? I actually have some good ideas about a TV show, which just got greenlit. I actually have some good ideas about a TV show. You're talking to me like I'm some dumbass. You don't realize my worth or you know I, I respect you respect me so when they were talking to me like that i was like oh fuck you i'm out man and i you know i just went off my instinct we're gonna be fine we're gonna land on our feet we've right. always bet on ourselves and so i called brian and told him he's just like oh my yeah, yeah, <laughs> man i'm like bro just trust me yeah. and I, and he goes well so we don't have a studio i'm like now here's the thing <laughs> <laughs> not exactly we're here's, building here's it right now you yeah. remember all that shit we had in our old studio we can't get in there. And if you go in there, you're going to get arrested. That's a true story. <laughs> I went, and if you even attempt to go in there, they're going to arrest you. Like, let me deal to you with this. Now. Yeah. And I, I went, well, just let me deal with it. You just show up. And he's like, all right, man. And he's like, I think we should issue an apology. I'm like, you don't do shit. Let me deal with this. So I built this a studio in like a week right across the street from Fox Sports. Perfect. Bigger, nicer, faster, stronger studio. And, uh, you know, here we are. Fuck, that's it worked awesome, out, man. Gangster. Again, I, I have no I animosity towards Fox. I when I was working for Showtime doing the Mayweather McGregor thing, um, I saw them, you know, a bunch of times. It, it's all love, man. Like, there's no, I'm not stealing anything away from them. They're not stealing anything away from me. I'd, feel, I'd work with them again, but you know, it's just, hey, man, like we're we're all sharks here. You yeah, know, we're all yeah. sharks. take it easy. Right, right. Hey, the, the, the dynamics have changed, man. Right. That's right. Yeah. I was gonna jack off on a plant next to me and just be all good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta think that ignite your fire though like to have someone think like that like uh, it's, underestimate you it's those chips on my shoulder where i didn't get the jersey as a kid or you you treated me as a lesser than when i was in college okay cool man i've been through this way worse before but now i actually have a tribe behind me mm -hmm. so so you know, again you're not going to shut me up you, you can say this and do this that's fine this isn't your cup of tea but I have I have all these followers with me. There happen to be about sixteen million of them. So we're gonna go. We're gonna take our ball. And we're gonna go over here. Yeah. Now you can continue to do your thing, but you no know, nothing changes for me, man. They have a tough time with that change, man. It reminds me of like when when uh, Netflix went into Blockbuster and Blockbuster laughed them out of the room or whatever. Like they have a tough time realizing like the power has changed. Mm -hmm. It really has changed. And, like, and you, you have it. And they they threw their shots. You know, they went. You know what? And this before he got fired for sexual harassment. He came out with this statement. Goes. You know, we're, we're not going to let another fire in the kid happen at Fox. We're going to invest. Oh, we're going to oh, invest wow. in our A-list talent like Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless. All right, motherfucker. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, tides are changing. There, huh? That's crazy. Someone that level did not see that. I feel like. It's, it's ego. It's all ego, yeah. dude. I, I was down yeah. to work and, you know, with this TV show that Brian and I were pitching, he, you know, he had his ideas and they were sinking ship. They still are right now. They're trying to figure out. They've lost 90% of the digital following and content once we left. So um, they're trying to figure out. He's not there anymore. And the, the new heads over there are great. And I'm cool with everyone at UFC tonight. I, I have no animosity. I'll help them out however I can. Uh, hashtag shows bigger than all theirs. But the thing is, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> you know, they're Still trying to dominating. Yeah. yeah. So they'll figure it out, man. Yeah. They, you know, they just, it's, it's this old school mentality, this dinosaur mentality. Yeah. yeah. But you're not going to last. No, it's changing. No. You, yeah. There's nothing you yeah. do now. Yeah. I, I think it's going to completely flip. I think, uh, I mean, you see the commercials now for Netflix, uh, the original series coming on TV now. Yeah. Like it looks just the like movies. A, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Will movies. Smith, it, that's what I mean. So, so my agent though is the one who <clears throat> represents uh, the director of that. And he told me about, and he showed me the the trailer before it was coming out. I'm like, dude, this is game changing. He's like, yeah, they signed Will Smith the TV deal. Wow. Like, Holy fuck. 
Yeah. Because I don't want to go to the movie theaters. You know, people getting shot up in that bitch. People are <laughs> talking. I'm trying to chill at home and, and the watch comfort the of your movie. house. That's yeah. what's gonna happen. When you want to watch trend, it right yeah. away. Will Smith. Yeah. I love right. Will Smith. Oh yeah. Who like, yeah. yeah. Narco, Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck your movie theaters. Yeah. 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 The only way I see movie theaters surviving is if they, they're and you see kind of some of them doing it is changing the experience, right? Where if like if we we get to the point where virtual reality and you feel like you're a part of the movie in there, otherwise I think Netflix puts it all down, dude. They're shitting on them, but there's those ones like the the IPIX theater. Have you guys been to that one no. up here off Wilshire? I think it's Wilshire. It's the it's this yeah, it's a recliner, and then they have they like, have to do that. They have great food, like yeah. world class food yeah. and drinks, bar upstairs. And but you shit. know, you're looking at a two hundred dollar night, probably hundred dollars a person. Yeah, yeah, really. It's it's like you know you can it's get a steak experience. dinner. It's an experience. It's an experience. But I'd rather just stay at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have kids. I take my kids to the movies. It's like 70 bucks each time we go to the goddamn movies. Yeah. It's like I'd rather be at home. Have you taken your kid to Disneyland yet? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you get that's a so expensive. Oh, I yeah. It's a fortune. Yeah. I took my kid for the first time. This is like a year ago. He's way too young. Waste of time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I nerd. call my dad and because he used to take me when I was a kid when we come here in the summers. Me and my brother. I was like, "Hey, how much was it when you used to take us?" And I told him the total. He's like, "Definitely not that much. It wasn't cheap, but definitely not that much. Like just the parking." The the Mickey Mouse airs, and by the time we bought the got into the goddamn park, I was like, "Holy, what is it? Seven hundred dollars?" Yeah, but oh you know God. what? You got to give them. And this is what I'll give Disney for this. Uh, my sister, so my sister uh, turned thirty what uh, five years ago, and for her thirtieth birthday, said, "Whatever you want to do, let's do whatever you want to do for your thirtieth." And she goes, "I want to go to Disneyland." I'm like, "You want to go to fucking Disneyland? You're thirty. Why do you want to do yeah. that?" Yeah. And she's uh, the thirty first of December, so New Year's Eve, and I'm like, "Okay." So we set up, and it was a fucking fortune to go there. But I tell you what, I hadn't been there since I was a kid. It's worth it. As soon as I pulled up the first person that it like bring it in the parking lot, fucking comes around my car, oh, that's magic. Pulls up, pulls out the map, yeah. and you're gonna go here and yeah, do this. Magic. Oh, yeah. it yeah. was that shit is magical. every person that I ran into that had a uniform or a name tag on greeted me yeah. and red yeah. carpet. Yeah. There's tree. a reason why they're killing it, dude. You've been to Knott's nope. Farm, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Ricky go to, yeah. go to Knott's Berry oh, Farm. Yeah. It will. Fuck might your, die. It will yeah. fuck your year up. <laughs> my, my girl, you know, she's from a rougher bar area. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I love Knott's Bay. Let's go there. I'm like, uh, I've never been there. Oh, I knew immediately when we pulled in. I'm like, is that fucking Charlie Brown? Yeah. She yeah. Was, I'm like, how current is Charlie Brown? What is going on here? <laughs> Snoopy. I was like, what the fuck? What is Snoopy doing here? You get, like, we go in. On it the was fucking, the biggest yeah. bummer, man. Yeah. The rides were shitty. Yeah. The food was awful. It was like $13 yeah. to get in. I was yeah. like, what is going on here? Dude, oh, dude. I, had, I, I I took my Disney, daughter. Disneyland is the shit when it comes to stuff. I'll, I, we were there. I'll never forget watching someone spill popcorn. Kids are walking, parents, it's crazy everywhere. And this and the kid turns and the popcorn goes poof, everywhere. Starts it was crying. No, no, no. 15 seconds. Yeah, Clean it up. Boom. So it's crazy. It's so big. Yeah. My, my only problem at Disneyland, and God bless them. Hopefully, you know, I can uh, not be so conceited and be fat when I'm older. But why is so everyone's so out Huge. of shape? Oh shit. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Have you been to Disney World? If oh, that's yeah. what America worse. looks like, I'm Bro, fucking I went, scared. At Disney World, there were literal traffic jams from the freaking, what do they call, larks or just the, the rascals? You know, the little scooters? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There were traffic jams. That's how many of them were there. And I think it's even worse there because you got the South. You know, people from the South going there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so strange, insane. man. It's insane. They're so out of shape. Yeah, yeah. it's bad. That's us bad. as Americans really right bad. now, man. It's, it's getting, a bummer. It's, getting, it's a lot of what mo- motivated Mind Pump. I mean, we you look at... With all the the science, the information, and knowledge we have, but yet diabetes is on the rise. All your autoimmune is on the rise. Like it's how, a, it's a lot. Wor- it's a lot. We know more, more, but yet we're getting worse. Well, it's a lot more than just we're eating too much and not moving em- enough. That's the problem. Like that's yeah. that's that's part of the problem. I think it's a discipline issue, but it's also the way that society is structured. Like I don't think humans are meant to be in a cubicle nine to five and not have to electric lights on. No, all the time I, I don't think that's normal. That's food a, that's freaking engineered and processed. Yeah, but that's quick simple. because we don't have time to eat good food, or we don't have time to prepare the good food, or the good food's more expensive. But I don't think humans were put on this earth to be well, designed to sit down for that long and focus on some job they don't give a fuck about. Yeah. Like, that's not living. No. So when you tell them, oh, eat right or exercise, like, you fucking try, man. I got three kids yeah. at home. I, I've been up since 6 a.m., got them ready for school. Then I got to be at work by 9. I'm there all Dude, goddamn day. You, then I got to feed them. So it, it's a tough dynamic. You know what the craze is in the Silicon Valley where we're at is the these guys don't even eat. They have the, the big craze is like uh, Soylent. Soylent. Yeah. Have you heard of this? It's just, a, it's just a fucking meal replacement powder. And the, the, the selling point is 
You don't need to leave your desk. Just eat this and you don't all need day. To eat, you don't, you don't need to eat food. food. Just drink this. It has everything you need. Yeah. And never leave your desk. Is it delicious? No. No. It's horrible. Come on, bro. It doesn't taste like know. anything. I don't know. It's everything I thought, you need. I don't know. But if it was delicious, I would love that. Yeah. But all day, nothing else? That's a bummer, man. You're basically turning into almost yeah. robots. That's yeah. Wally. Have you seen it's the It's like Wally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. drink everything through a straw. God damn. Yeah. That's silly. It's happening. And these guys are putting up with it. Well, that's why, you know, Apple tried the same shit, and that's why people started committing suicide, jumping off the goddamn building. You know, at Apple headquarters in China, they have nets. Yeah, I know. So many people <laughs> commit suicide. Yeah. I did yeah, not know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nets. There's a big yeah. problem. Yeah. Enjoy your iPhone, motherfucker, because that <laughs> those people paid the price for it. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, they dude. had to put nets. So many people were like, fuck this, and then jumped <laughs> off. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. Dude, a great book to read, Irresistible, and they talk about uh, you know all these guys that created all this tech. They don't even let their kids use any of it because they know how bad it is for them. Mm-hmm. They know how addictive. They know it's they, they cre- it's a drug. Great book to read. I think every parent should read it. What's it called? Irresistible. Adam Atler. And it gets it. It gets into that. Dude. How, old, how old is your kid? He's uh, twenty one months. Twenty one months. He, 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 you know, is he still? He's already on the. He'll grab my phone, but he, he just likes buttons. Yeah, 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 with him. Right. He's not just wait till they get a little older, man. So, it is so addicting. But, but you know, he has a iPad where if we go to lunch, something he'll watch his favorite movie yeah. or something like that. But I know, like, I have a problem. Like, so on the weekends, if I'm not working, I leave my phone upstairs where I can't touch mm-hmm. it, I can't see it. Mm-hmm. But if I'm around it, I can. Acknowledge I'm addicted to it. All right. Like even sitting here, I'm a little yeah, yeah. shaky with Haven't the sweats. It like, I'm like what's yeah. going on? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> and I know if I have that problem and I consider myself a disciplined dude, other people are fucked. Well, well think of this. we didn't oh, grow yeah. up with it. Big time. We didn't grow up with it, right? How old are you? Uh, 34. Yeah, so we didn't grow up with it. Our kids, this they're born into it. You know what I mean? It's a bummer, though, because yeah. every day when I go to the gym, I drive by Santa Monica High School, and the kids are out there waiting for the bus. They're just getting dropped off. All kids have their backpack. Not one kid is talking to each yeah. other. All, just all looking like this. Down. I'm like, God, you guys are missing out, yeah, man. Dude, you yeah. know, right, right yeah. now we're seeing a rise in back pain in children. We never had mm-hmm. chronic back pain in Jesus children. Christ. And it's the posture. It's completely hunched over the entire time, nonstop. I wonder, in the how, back we fi- I wonder how we're going to fix that. Well, it, it's what's going to happen is the pendulum's going to say, and that's why I say read this book, because what, we've only had 10 years of Facebook and all this shit, really, right? Or 10 or 12, whatever they're on right now. It hasn't been that long for us to really have a lot of studies. To know what's really going to happen. Yeah, like what's happening. And what's coming out is they're saying the, the addictive properties are just as bad as heroin and cocaine and yes. things like that. The dopamine it releases yes. when you get likes or attacks. And what's like different is if you're a dope addict, and I know you 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 show that, you see that, you're ashamed of that. But yeah. no one's ashamed to pick their phone up. No one's ashamed to, to use social media. You're not ashamed of that. In fact, it's encouraged because you can build a business off of it. So that's a scary thought. Dri- driving and texting is the biggest issue because now they're saying, I was speaking to a cop the other day, he was saying he sees more wrecks and deaths from texting and driving than drinking and driving now. Mm. Wow. wow. Think how many people text and drive. Yeah, it makes like, sense. Yeah, I'm a responsible I'm fucking dude. Yeah. I text and drive sometimes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guilty of that for sure. Oh, everybody is, dude. Yeah. That's what. That's that, the problem. Yeah. yeah. That and so that's how addicting it is. You know it. You know that this. is some I know stupid it's bad. Shit. Yeah, 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 dude. I was driving uh, off, off here, off Pacific in Venice here, and I'm driving. I was, I was I'm going three miles an hour, so relax. But I'm going, <laughs> and I'm looking, and this old dude in like an old school Chevelle pulls up, and he goes. Hey, get the fuck off your phone. And you, you can't say nothing back. Well, I, and my instinct was like, what? Like, but I, you, I, I literally was like, God damn, you're right, yeah. man. My bat, bro. And he's like, it's all right. But I was like, you're so right. What am I doing, <laughs> yeah. man? And I'll see girls texting, makeup, just driving. I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck. We're going 80, <laughs> bitch. Like, what are you doing? It's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. Ugh. So it's it's swinging this way. And it's I think it's a matter of time before it has to come back the other direction. It's got to be not cool anymore. It's like cigarettes. Like, it used to be cool to smoke cigarettes. And now if you smoke God, cigarettes, forever, you look. Forever, bro. It did. It did. That's, That's the scary part. That this, might, this might take a while. And you look at more of a mass audience. I, th- yeah. I think what you're going to have to, it's, I don't know about people being addicted at home. That's to each its own. That's going to be a problem they got to solve. But as far as texting and driving, you're going to have to have the new cars. The technology doesn't just allow it you. Just Siri, you can yeah. do emergency calls, but that's it. There mm-hmm. should be no texting. When you get in the phone, it should shut it off, no matter what. Well, we get oh, free, stuff- freedom of speech, freedom yeah. of will. No, yeah. fuck that. Yeah. No, fuck that. No, no, no. When you get in the car, it should shut it off. Yeah. No, well, but that, I we, think we, when we, we have self driving Yeah, I was say, we're going to be driving cars. cars for that much longer. Yeah. It, that's the race right now. The Google. I mean, the rate. We're going to be dead when there's flying cars and that. But, I mean, good luck. I don't want to be in a world where I can't drive my car. Like, I love driving. Well, so man. the reason yeah. why people Teslas are but this is what nerds. when you talk to people like uh, like Tom Bill, you remember when we inter- interviewed him? Like he doesn't drive anywhere; he Ubers everything, and it's because so he can doesn't Work. have to stop. Just non. What's he do? 
and he's oh, he's an impact theory. He started. Um, he was he was one of the one of the founders of a uh, Quest Nutrition. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Relax. Yeah. yeah. You, you, oh, you make protein bars. Relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> oh, relax. <laughs> you don't need to text and have an Uber driver. <laughs> You're making keto friendly protein powder. Relax. <laughs> relax. The guy solving AIDS and having that problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not solving malaria. <laughs> That's You're making uh, fucking protein bars. That's what's happening. You can though. drive your car. Yeah. That's what's happening. Uh, though. I like to drive. Well, I do too. Yeah. I'm a car guy. I'm so a you're, fucking you're a car, car guy. And we're we're 34 plus years old. But, but I also don't want an Uber driver. Yeah. See, yeah. the people, the younger generation. I can't up, wait to not have how many that, kids, how really? Oh, have like you met kids that are like 20 or 22 yeah. years old? Like some of these kids are just 20, Uber everywhere. No what, license. Yeah. I got a little brother who's fucking 22, doesn't have a license. Like, I don't want to get it. I would feel like a loser. Yeah, you're telling me. The dynamics are different. You don't want freedom? The you know China, I mean? Well, they can't have freedom through Uber now. It's different. It's uh, very different now. Kids don't want to get their yeah. licenses anymore. Uh, it's it's we're one or two generations away from car ownership being a thing of the past. The insurance business just, is like oh fuck, big time, yeah. big time. Guys like you, guys like you and I who want a hot rod in our cool cars around will get laughed at. They'll be like, it'll oh, be like yeah. someone riding a horse. Outside. Yes, yes. You, you, you like horses? You like people? Someone riding a horse? I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna <laughs> stay on it. I'm, just I'm, like, I'm gonna just like just like if skinny jeans got us now. <laughs> fucking riding yeah. this out, man. <laughs> I'm riding. I'm like, riding my horse like dude. a fanny pack in the '80s. <laughs> fuck you guys, man. I like it. Comes back. I don't care. I don't care, man. Well, good deal, man. Oh, dude. You oh, know what? So Hon- we ha- we're going to have to do this again for sure, man. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you're ever right. up in the Bay Area, well, we got a whole I'm media facility. We have a, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it around your show because we're that's right. literally we'll around the corner. Let's do it. Let me figure out when it is and yeah. let's do it, man. We have a yeah. whole like like pod- We have a whole studio, media facility. So. Anytime. And we're going to come heckle the fuck yeah. out of you. Oh, yeah. Do it, man. We'll be the bros. Do it. Yeah. Be the drunk bros. Yeah. Yeah, real funny. I love it, man. Well, I appreciate you guys. Hey, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, Katrina. For hammering him, uh, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. that girl. Shout a out beast. to Katrina. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's a super beast. Yeah. 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 Don't try and steal her. Much yeah. appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys, man. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right, check it out. Go to yeah. YouTube. Check out Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day, so subscribe and share those videos with your friends. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.